This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV. The Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast contains mature content, explicit language, suggestive situations, and partial to full frontal nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Don't let your kids listen to this. I was watching the Watchmen movie. Never watched it before. Fucking terrible. Fucking three hours long. I think I discovered something that I had not noticed before. What's that? Carla Gugino, colon, cheeks, question mark. Are you serious? Oh, man. I've never, this is not, never, it's never come up. What are you talking about? It's come up a lot, trust me. (laughs) Has it? Entourage, man. Entourage, new girl. Oh, boy. Like it's a plot point or you guys just have seen it? Her arc in Entourage is she's a sexy agent that seduces Vince away from Ari. Spoiler alert. Goodness. Yeah, she fucks him into her company. You know, like any good agent would do. Now I'm looking at pictures online and now I'm not so, I'm not sold. I'm not sold at all. I don't give a fuck if you're sold or not. You've had the wrong opinion on her forever. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> you having a bad opinion on Carla Gugino is par for the course. No, I'm just saying, like, I don't. Cheeks for the course. Unless there was some sort of enhancement that happened. You know what we just watched? Memory. An honest hit, man. Honesty is such a lonely word. Everyone is so untrue. He was an honest hitman. He was an honest hitman, man. That's what they should have called it. They should have a whole honest series, right? <laughs> yeah. An honest traffic cop. Yeah. An honest Oakley salesman. I, uh, <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> There's no such thing. There's no such thing. An honest salesman of Oakley's? Impossible. What are you talking about? There's no such thing. <laughs> I love that line so much. But impossible. Much like speed is everything. Much like wrong. You got it wrong. Impossible has a much better ring to it. Look, the wrong you got it wrong is not wrong. The intonation's wrong. It's just not entirely correct. (laughs) Okay, thanks. You got it wrong. (laughs) You sound like him now. (laughs) That's the honest thief explanation. (laughs) I just didn't tell you certain things. I didn't lie. (laughs) Man, I fucking love Liam Neeson. It just warms my heart seeing Liam Neeson movies. Well, you're in luck because we have a whole goddamn <laughs> month of this. It's a cosmic mix of the action of the 90s combined with the exploitation films of the 70s. But with modern touches, it's hyper violence, but it knows that it is. It's a little bit Tarantino. It's definitely a little bit Michael Mann. It's kind of a cosmic gumbo. <laughs> It almost moves to the beat of jazz. People are genetically inferior, or they're culturally crippled, or they're socially deprived. How come God couldn't make everyone one color? Like ten. I wish I'd fucked a black broad before I got married. I could really feel 400 years of oppression and anger in every pelvic thrust. I can smell horny across an ocean. (sighs) Not all women. Good for you, man. Good for you, good for you. Just the hot ones. Hello. Oprah. You're not allowed to go down on me for one month. No, Judy, Don't please. Don't make me take away your masturbation privileges. Yeah, I'm horny too, baby. Hey, Chowman, come on down here. Will you want to exercise my dominance? It's scaring me. Really a patriarchal urge.
mind me. Just keep doing what you're doing. We're a team. We work together. I don't know if you were paying attention. <laughs> I was. Please, God damn it! Just one more drink! I'll call your kids with a knife, you bitch! Five whiskeys. That's breakfast on the river. Yo, you have to clip it, Maze. Clip what? A fucking tiger? What are you talking about? It's not that hard. Just chop, chop, boom, out. Wow, Maze has a really hard job. This is going to be the worst episode we've ever done. My people don't give a ding-dong diddly about what flag fly over Hawaii. You bore me, Fury. Where is the micro film? It's nothing but a bag of meat and flesh and tendon. Why didn't they just name him Spaghetti Lasagna? Fuck, this movie's two hours long? Not the whole thing. This is like the John Gruden emails of movies. Do you like ducks? Or a trench coat full of bees flying around? Like, that would scare bees. me. Bees, bees, bees are that. cool. That's a duck, man. No, I get it. Coolio. You're the devil's baby mama. I didn't lie, Annie. I just didn't tell you certain things. Don't play no reindeer games with me. An American ninja. What are you talking about? There is no such thing. gotten rich off of the people in this town. <laughs> you bet your ass I have. And I'm gonna get richer. Coughlin's law. Go into incredibly descriptive details of the story so we all know. Oh man, I wish I had better notes. Have you ever heard such a pile of shit? Once I get a DVD player, I'm gonna watch Gallo Walkers once a day. Come here and give me a squudge. You know what to do from here, internet. <laughs> all right, cool. Let me Google how to open quick time. Justice is blind. He's got space dementia. But it can be heard. Time to find out exactly what this ooze can do. Pull the fucking rabbit out of your dick and fold. I'm Temecula's newest hard on, dog. Hey, look at here. Why don't we eat us a few thousand beers? You can tell me what's buzzing in the big bad city. Come on, yeah! I just gotta look out for love. Podcast. We break down the movies you're afraid to admit you love. I'm Zach Harper. That's Amin Alhassan. That's Anthony Mays. We're part of the Levitard and Friends Network for Metal Arc Media. We're recording this a week after Moss. It comes out a month after Moss, but we're recording it a week after Moss. Yeah, I love that. Every other podcast on the network had some sort of Moss recap right there that first week out. Not us. We had Don't Worry Darling. <laughs> we hit him with the opposite. The opposite of Moss is Don't Worry Darling. Hey, since we're at the top of the lark, you should give us a review. You should. If you have a review, review it. Apple Podcasts, five stars, say whatever you want. Talk about your experience meeting us at Moss if you did that. Talk about movies you wish we'd do. Talk about movies you wish qualified. Just talk. Make sure it's five stars. And if you've already left a review, update that some bitch. How about that? When we were at Moss, Fan Lebetard went to an Apple store and left... 62 reviews. Wow. That's dedication, man. Trying to look inquisitive. I think it helps the staff feel like I'm actually thinking about the phone and not spamming reviews. Ass off. Red shirts. Apple staff wearing them for holidays. Makes them easier to spot. <laughs> Gotta stay low. So yeah, you should be doing that. Go to an Apple <laughs> store. Leave some reviews. Give a submission. Submit it. Just a reminder. It needs to be 40% or lower on the Rotten Tomatoes audience or the critic score oh do a neeson month well wow. bangers that was from fan level 25 speaking of that it's january it's 2023 happy new year a new year a new month and a new theme for cinephobe january 2023 is liam neeson month and with the first pick no. of the new year amin has decided to give us the 2022 action crime thriller memory Action thriller. Ah, uh, no crime. Lots of crime. There's a lot of crime. Back-to-back -back 2022 movies for Amin. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. 
That's all he picks now. Yeah, that's, this is going to be the year 2022 for me. Memory stars repeat defender Liam Neeson. I wish I knew how to quit you. Which do you know from A Million Ways to Die in the West? No. Daddy's Home 2. I forgot about that. Honest Thief and Battleship. I wish I could pick Mistletoe for this month. Daddy's Home 2 was a special edition, right? It's in the archives. Mm -hmm. Father's Day. Liam had the Marksman and Ice Road in 2021. Oh, that's a file. (laughs) Should have done that one. (laughs) Shit. The Marksman is racist as shit. Maybe it'll come up this month. I haven't seen Ice Road. Ice Road's good, man. I saw it on a plane. (laughs) He has this movie, Black Light and Marlowe in 2022. Liam Neeson has seven eligible movies just in the last three years. One of them was Honest Thief <laughs> that we already did, so it's going to be recent <laughs> Liam Neeson month. It's going to be a while. Memory also stars Guy Pierce, Taj Atwal, and Harold Torres. Guy was in L.A. Confidential, Memento, The Time Machine, Iron Man 3, and The Catcher Was a Spy, which is starring Paul Rudd as a catcher in World War II who becomes a spy. Yeah, I saw that one on a plane also a long time ago. Did you? Yeah. Wow. I tend to watch movies on flights that I know I'll never watch this anywhere else. Taj was in The Diary of My Broken Vagina. Yep. Harold was in El Chapo. And 000. I don't know what that is. It was an Amazon TV series two years ago, I want to say. It's pretty good. We also get Ray Fearon, Monica Bellucci, and Ray Stevenson. Ray Fearon was in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Macbeth, and The Hooligan Factory. Monica, you know from the Matrix franchise, The Brothers Grimm, Shoot 'em Up, and The Sorcerer's Apprentice. And The Passion of the Christ, where she played that whore Mary Magdalene. Oh, oh. spoiler alert. Go listen to Da Vinci Code. Repeat Offender. <laughs> Repeat Offender, Mary Magdalene. And Ray Stevenson was in The Other Guys, Book of Eli, the Thor franchise, and he's Blackbeard in Black Sails. Stella Stalker from The Batman. And you know who she played in The Batman? No. Martha. Oh. Atanas Srebrev, repeat offender from Hurricane Heist. I wish I knew how to quit you. J.R. Esposito, repeat offender from Hurricane Heist. And that's it. That's all we got for the cast. Thank God. Not a deep cast. Not a deep cast of actors who have ever been in anything we've seen before. There's not much trivia about this movie, but there's some funny trivia about the cast. Uh, Memory was directed by Martin Campbell. Martin directed Sex Thief, GoldenEye, Mask of Zorro, Casino Royale, and a repeat offender. For Green Lantern. I wish I knew how to quit you. Four writing credits for memory. Dario Scartapain. Screenplay. 18 episodes of a show called Trauma. One episode of Dominion. Yeah. Uh The Legion TV sequel. And four episodes of The Punisher. Jeff Gerarts wrote the book. Did Zach Alzheimer? (laughs) Zach Alzheimer? (laughs) D-E space Z-A-A-K Alzheimer. Wrote the novel Memory of a Killer. Carl, this is a tough one. (laughs) Carl, (laughs) J-O-O-S. Sound it out. Carl, Hus. No, he's not (laughs) Spanish. It wouldn't be a huh. Hus. Actually, it might be use. We'll go with use. (laughs) Based on the picture, de Zach Alzheimer. Also wrote 13 episodes of something called Containment and 10 episodes of In Flanders Field. And we also get Eric Van Luy, who wrote the movie Memory of a Killer, also known as De Zach Alzama. Synopsis for memory. An assassin for hire finds that he's become a target after he refuses to complete a job for a dangerous criminal organization. Doesn't mention Alzheimer's at all in there. And maybe because I think they forgot for about an hour of the movie that that was a plot point. More than that, man. (laughs) Tagline, his mind is fading. His conscience is clear. <laughs> That's a good tagline, man. That's an excellent tagline. That's like a solid 8 out of 10. Can I give a spoiler? Sure. I thought the Alzheimer's would play a bigger role. I'm kind of disappointed. Same. We'll get into <laughs> it, but I was doing a count. For subtlety's sake, I get it, but like I didn't want subtle. It became too subtle. Okay. My notes are <laughs> a disaster <laughs> because of the way I interpreted every scene. $30 million estimated budget. Gross 7.3 million US and 13.8 million worldwide. It's a flop. Flop it. 2022, tough year unless you were Top Gun Maverick. Before we jump into this movie and you listen to the rest of this podcast, Memory is available on Amazon Prime. As are a lot of the other Liam Neeson movies. 
a lot of Liam Neeson movies. Yeah. Every time I went to the main screen, it's like, would you also like to watch Honest Thief? <laughs> yes, I would. What about Blacklight? Memory receives 29% from the critics on 100 reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. I wrote in between those two letters. I think it's 81%. Yeah, 81. Okay, because I wrote 6813%, but I think instead of <laughs> deleting that 63% from before, I just went right in the middle there <laughs> and added the 81 on over 250 verified ratings. I can't stand this verified ratings shit. I don't like it, man. A lot of them are real dumb. I don't like it. I mean, would you like the positive or the negative reviews? I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Wait a second. Am I a glass half full? Memory. What's the question again? <laughs> hey, John, that's weird. That glass looks half full to me. Wow. Now that you mention it, it is half full. Catherine Monk of xpress.com. Catholic Monk. Memory seethes with evil deeds and evil doers, motivated by nothing more than greed and a lust for power. And for once, Neeson's character isn't a blinding ray of light purifying everything around him through sheer willpower. And clench fists. Isn't he? He kind of is a little bit, right? Yeah. He's unquestionably a... Yeah. He's an honest hitman. Yeah. All he kills is bad people and that cop that happened in the, the traffic stop. <laughs> Might have been a dirty cop. We don't know. No. He had a wife and two kids, according to Captain Exposition. That's not a big deal. Jim Shembry of jimshembry.com. An above average Liam Neeson action piece aimed squarely at an adult audience that doesn't mind lots of plot talk. Veteran director Martin Campbell gives the proceedings an unusually jagged edge that lifts it above more formula-minded genre pieces. It's a lot of plot talk. Bill Newcott of the Saturday Evening Post. You're never wasting your time with Liam Neeson, nor with Guy Pierce, <laughs> who starred in the granddaddy of memory-based thrillers, Memento. Yo. Strong performances and classy production go a long way to keep memory from being forgettable. <sighs> classy production I mean it was kind of classy There's a lot of memory puns in these reviews A lot of memento references perhaps Yep Okay Tara McNamara of Common Sense Media <laughs> Oh that's not a real name No chance While Neeson is playing yet another character who has quote A certain set of skills He does bring nuance to the role of Alex Lewis An aging assassin who's dealing with cognitive decline Zach do you know what George Mikan's son is named? I don't Mike Mikan that's stupid. Why would you set your kid up for that? That's so dumb. Bogdan Bogdanovich. <laughs> yeah, good point. Bill Goody Kuntz of Arizona Republic. I'm sorry, what? Goody Kuntz. <laughs> That's as slow as you're going to get that name, I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> Memory is a good enough movie that could have been a lot better. Neeson is to thank for most of the good. Turns out he, like his characters, does have a particular set of skills. They involve acting. <laughs> Okay. Tim Apello of AARP Movies for Grown Ups. Yeah. Enough of this bullshit. Memory isn't memorable, but its gimmick is more interesting than Neeson's typical action fare. Memory isn't memorable because your AARP ass can't remember shit. Old fuck. <laughs> Rahul Desai of First Post. It's not great, but maybe it's something far more valuable. It's honest. Oh, man. <laughs> Come on. Honesty. Is such a lonely word. Everyone is so untrue. Zach, do you control F honest before you no, do anything? Man. I just couldn't. I couldn't add that one fast enough. I tried to get a video, but I couldn't flip the thing fast enough. Michael O'Sullivan of Washington Post. Memory feels more like film noir, <laughs> deliciously dark, cynical, and slightly amoral than a pulpy piece of rote storytelling. Definitely some overlap with Poison Rose because we're both in quote unquote Texas. A few user reviews. User Sherry, five out of five. Sherry. Sherry, baby. Sherry. Never saw a Liam Neeson movie I didn't like. This does not disappoint. <laughs> Lots of action violence. Excellent ending. Zach Harper. That could have been you guys. Yeah, that's Zach. <laughs> you, user Wyatt. Five out of five stars. Excellent ending, by the way. Come on, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> what a dog shit ending, man. I need to go see more action movies. This movie reminds me why. <laughs> User Elaine TB. Five out of five stars. Elaine T. Bennis. <laughs> Elaine Tuberculosis. Now, now. No one's calling Elaine a TB. 
Liam Nelson at his best. <laughs> Second time seeing this movie. Second time, but you still don't know his name. <laughs> and then final user review, user Daniela, five out of five stars. Good movie, good service, good food, clean. Can't ask for more. What? I don't know. <laughs> What's your clean? One on, one on Rotten Tomatoes and reviewed the theater. I think it was Yelp or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's a great question. Negative reviews. Stop being a pessimist. This tank is not half full. It's half empty. Stephen Romay, the Australian. Stephen Romay. Personally, I think what Liam Neeson should do is order a hit on the role of Hitman and have a go at doing something different. Peter Canavesi of Groucho Reviews. You can pretty much forget about it. Alan Adams of The Main Edge. Memory is ironically named because it is yet another Liam Neeson movie that you will completely forget about as soon as you reach the parking lot. Christy Lemire of Film Week, KPCC, NPR, Los Angeles. Oh, this one should be like sophisticated, right? I wish I could forget it. Never mind. It's been just about every <laughs> negative review. <laughs> Thanks, NPR. Allison Gilmore of Winnipeg Free Press. Gilmore Girl. Is this a positive progressive expression of anti-ageism, or is it just Hollywood's same old, same old, a doubled down assertion that old white guys are still relevant, powerful, and able to bed beautiful young women? Mostly, it's the latter. That was kind of a confusing plot twist. Weird twist, just to get another body in there. Yeah. Think you paid for it? Yeah, of course. Okay. That's not a freebie, man. But because he knocked out a client? He took some money out of her pocket. He sure did. Put something in her pocket. <laughs> Woo! Alcy <Elsie> Rengflo <laughs> of Entertainment Voice. Memory has the most ironic title in the Neeson canon because it feels like a recollection of every cliche the great actor has solidified in his career as a gun-wielding tough guy. My favorite part is I watched an interview with him where he claimed that this is so different from all the stuff he's done. <laughs> I'm like, what? Chris Sawin of Real Rundown. I'm Sawin. Memory is a monotonous bore. Not even Liam Neeson lighting himself on fire to cauterize a bullet wound can save what is otherwise a forgetful and fatigued memoir of a hoary hitman. Hoary? H-O-A-R-Y. What's that mean? It's a great question. Grayish white. Oh. Old and trite. Derek Deskins of Edge Media Network. Another in a long string of Neeson revenge movies that do little more than make you wish he could just play his age. I mean, he kind of is playing his age. He has Alzheimer's. James Vernier of Boston Herald. Douche. Neeson is a hugely talented actor, but he has been chasing the lightning in the bottle that was taken for too long. That's not what he's chasing, James. Taken was 2008, by the way. He's not chasing that. 14 years later. He's being led, not even chasing, being led by bags of money. Other people are chasing that and casting him in these movies. I got paid two bill to play Crash War. How does that money help you? Well, it does, because that amount is called by quote. That's by rate. So the next film I'm offered, they have to pay that same amount. Even if I do a bad job, that means as long as I'm offered even one more movie, I can get two more mil. Even if I do a bad job, they got to give me that other two bill. It's also the same production company or distribution company. This Briarcliff Entertainment has put out a shit ton of Liam Neeson. What do you what do you want to call these shits? I don't know. Action thrillers. Revenge killing movies. <laughs> yep. Honest movies. And then a couple of user reviews. User Nancy B, two and a half out of five stars. I dislike the movie being so dark. The quote accents that I couldn't understand and all of the killings and shootings. I couldn't follow the storyline, so I don't know what it was all about. I like Liam Neeson, but not in this movie. It's a pretty straightforward storyline. Not really hard to figure out. Almost to a fault. User Brawlio, one out of five stars. No, oh, you don't want to get caught in a dark alley with Brawlio. If your name is Brawlio, you gotta be able to fight, right? You have to fight, yeah. You can't fuck this shit up. Not his type of movies. He's never the villain. <laughs> But he's not the villain. What am I missing here? He's a contract killer. I mean, he's a thief, an honest thief, you know? And then user Mike L, two out of five stars. Just another Neeson shoot em up movie. The storyline wasn't very smooth. Wait for it to come pay-per-view. But you're still paying for it. Yeah. Do people still do stuff on pay-per-view? Or does that just mean you just buy it when it's streaming? That's an AARP person yep. <laughs> saying, get it on demand. All right. We'll get your first note of mean after these pre-recorded messages a listener what's up zach harper coming to you live from just making my picks on prize picks the largest daily fantasy sports platform in north america 
for my money and your money, the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. Again, that's daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of players, including like pros and sharks, those people that really try to game the system and screw you over, you just pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Basketball's here, right? So check this out. This is the cool thing that I love from prize picks. You can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the specials league, a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports and leagues. So if you want to do like more Patrick Mahomes yards and less James Harden points, you can do that. You can do that combination. You can do any combination that they have on there. You just go to the specials league. You want to play alongside people. Maybe you don't want to go it alone. Maybe you want to play alongside people. You can go to, I don't know, Meek Mill, Andrew Schultz. You find them in the community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the prize picks community each week. And best of all, Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured for football and basketball games. If you have the player who exits the game in the first half and does not return the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks, the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So I'll tell you what you do. You go to prizepicks.com slash ding and use the promo code DING, D-I-N-G, for a first deposit match up to $100. Let me say that again for you. You go to prizepicks.com slash DING. You use the code DING, D-I-N-G, for a first deposit match up to $100 from our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. I mean, what is your first note? All right, so my first, first note is... Your first, first note? Whoa, yeah. hold on. <laughs> I took a note before I even started watching this movie or doing anything. I just wanted to mention this. I went to my kid's recital last night, and it was like the scene from Envy. The one kid is playing like the piano expertly, and then the other kid is just banging trash cans. <laughs> and you know how Ben Stiller like winced with every additional bash? Yeah. That's how I felt. And then my first note is, what's this bear doing? Oh, wait, it's just a production company tag. Yo, I got so excited. Okay, we're at the beach. No, wait, another tag. <laughs> well, now that seems intentionally misleading. All right, someone's coming to town. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, all right, period movie. Oh, not a period movie. Oh, this guy's in trouble. Can't wait to hear his story. Oh, come on! Baze, what's your first note? Liam Neeson is 70 years old. <laughs> Why is he still doing this? Money, man. When he was on Smartless, I think he was wrapping up his 100th movie. 100. It's a lot of movies. I mean, he's been putting up more numbers in the last 14 years than he did before that. I know. They're all going to be this year. <laughs> Coincidentally, when he lost all sense of standards. Well, I don't think that's what happened. No? No. Didn't his wife die? Yeah, his wife died in a skiing accident. All right, I guess I'm an action star now. And he channeled his grief into anger. It actually sounds like the story from a Liam Neeson movie that you would see now. Wow. My first note, clip it, Maze. Wallahar. <laughs> the caravan of mostly Central American immigrants is now in the Mexican city of Guadalajara. That's what I thought your first note was going to be. Wow. What a same note, too, that would have been. I know. I got really <laughs> excited for it. We're in Guadalajara, Mexico, folks. And then I wrote hatchbacks, 20 CV. Oh, <laughs> same note, too. <laughs> and I said, I once dated a girl in college who drove that very same hatchback Civic. I've never had a friend who drove a hatchback, and I've never dated anyone who drove a hatchback. Really? But I've seen them everywhere. The new hatchback Civic, my brother has one of those. It's actually kind of nice. Is Liam Neeson in Scrubs? Is he a doctor? Is he a nurse? Mm-hmm. Some poor screams through the parking garage, and two goons get out with flowers. Loud hip-hop music plus driving a Porsche like Brad Wesley equals, these must be the bad guys. Goon 1 looks like the kid from Stranger Things all grown up. Buenos dias! I swear you get lovelier every day, Claudia. This bad guy is horny, but with a J because it's in Spanish. Jorny. 
that I wrote. Probably racist. He pretends to give her flowers. She says she can't. And then he negs her, saying they're not for her. Why was she feeling his vibes? I don't know, man. Such a creep. And she's like, ooh. I'm like, come on. Does that really work? I mean, he's clearly been there before. Yeah. His mom or someone's in the hospital, so he's probably going there like every day. But he doesn't know her name. He had to look at the name tag. Yeah. Or is that just because he's crushing so much pussy that like maybe <laughs> uh, you haven't crushed more than three pussies since you broke off with jody dad what is this obsession with pussy crushing counting i really i just i'm not comfortable with that term sorry snatch whatever he laughs and walks away and the nurse at the front desk ass off what? she was fantastic man the look she gave okay all right, he walks into the room with the old woman on a respirator, asks if they can have the room, and Liam is in a COVID mask and putting away some sheets like an orderly. Goon One bends down to kiss her on the forehead, and boom! Liam hits him with some piano wire from behind. The Garrett. Goon One getting choked out. Ass off. I got a picture for you guys. Let's get this straight, Zach. It's been four minutes, and you've got two ass offs already. Look, check the chat, and you tell me. Couple things, couple things. Number one, no hospital room ever needs to be that big, right? You don't have activities when you're in the hospital. You're in a bed. Number two, Liam Meeson, por supuesto, not only ass off, but a Lewis Pinnock nominee. Mm -hmm. Number three, Zach, you gave an ass off nomination to the goon dying. I see your goon dying and I raise you. Oh. Ass off for the old lady dying in bed because she saw her son get murdered. Oh, she's fantastic. She's so ass off. Maze, what are you looking for when you watch these movies? Because you seem so surprised by us recognizing good acting. <laughs> Maze, you know what I figured out about Maze? Maze does not appreciate small windows. He doesn't, no. 90% of the movie has to involve this person for them to have done a good job. I'm a supporter, as you are, Zach, of the art. Yeah. And these people are artists. Oh, absolutely. You may not have heard of them, Anthony Mays. I'm sorry. They're not famous enough for you. But these people are acting their asses off. No, you know what I mean? I'm sorry. I'm sorry for having standards and not just handing out ass offs to whatever person walks through the door and looks a certain way or widens their eyes or gets choked. All right, he rips through the dude's neck with the wire, kills him. Her heart monitor is going through the roof. He puts gloves in a plastic bag and he leaves. Gets in the hatchback. Text just finished early. Be home soon for dinner. Then he puts the battery to his phone in the same Ziploc bag. <gasps> but he can't find the keys to the car that were in the visor. I never understand why people do that. I don't understand that either. So easy to steal. I feel like it's a movie thing. I don't think anyone actually does that in real life. Yeah, it's got to be a movie thing. Why is he so stressed about the key? Or is this supposed to indicate his deteriorating memory? Is that what this movie's about? A hitman with Alzheimer's? Well, I mean, they were in his pocket. He's genuinely confused, and that's it. I'm counting memory lapses. One. Oh, shit. Now, I thought this was going to be a real high number in this movie, and it is not. <laughs> ass off as he's <laughs> frantically looking around. Oh. And then ass off after he realizes, oh, it was in my pocket all along. This is his best acting job ever. 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 No. <laughs> Wait till we get to the golden dumpster scene, boys. Which one? You'll know it when it cut. There's only two scenes for me. I'm excited to find those out. Cut to El Paso, Texas. Yeah. And I wondered, wait, is Liam Neeson just making movies about the U.S.-Mexico border now? Because that's what the Marksman's about. Yeah. I don't mean this in a rude way, but I've always hated Guy Pierce's face. I just hate it. I don't like looking at it, and I don't enjoy his performances because of it. A lot of things to unpack here. Number one, holy shit, Guy Pierce, you've aged horribly. But then I remembered who I always thought Guy Pierce looked like, Val Kilmer. What? And I thought, on second thought, you haven't <laughs> aged that terribly. What? Okay. This is a thing. All right. He looks nothing like Val Kilmer. Just put in Guy Pierce, Val Kilmer. No. I'm not even asking you to pull up their pictures. I'm saying this is a thing. This is not a me thing. By the way, shout out to everyone who agreed with me of Jennifer Aniston. Both people that tweeted you saying I agree. No, no, no. There are multiple people. There were literally two. Here's the Guy Pierce, Val Kilmer thing. <sighs> I mean, that's just a picture of the side by side. Looks nothing like him. But hold on. Let me get this straight. I mean, you're mm -hmm. saying he hasn't aged that poorly because he doesn't have a terrible disease like Val Kilmer. 
I mean, isn't the hallmark of aging poorly getting terrible diseases? If you remain healthy. <laughs> Not to Liam Neeson. No. If you remain healthy and vital, doesn't that make you aging well? I'm sorry. Why are you trying to turn this into something like, oh, Amin said something controversial. You brought up Val Kilmer's yeah. looking shitty for no reason. Yeah, you threw him under the bus. Not no reason. Come on now. Guy Pierce looks more like Jason Priestley there than he does Val Kilmer. What? In that picture you just sent? Yeah, he does. No. Not at all. Oh, my God. You have no idea what you're talking about. Some guy asked no Guy Pierce if he's nervous. Tension. That's okay. When I first saw you, I said to myself, this is a man that knows what he wants. <laughs> he's just afraid. <laughs> guy says he's not afraid. Oh. A man must pay to get what he wants. <laughs> and I wondered, is this fake Benicio Del Toro? No. he's. What's my man from American Gods? You ever seen that show, Maze? No. Maze watches a bunch of shitty shows. <laughs> Ian McShane. Oh, he looks like a fake ass Ian McShane. God damn it. Ian McShane? All right. Yeah. Let's just. Isn't that the dude from John Wick? Deadwood and John Wick. He looks nothing like Ian McShane. They both have long hair. <laughs> like a fatter version. I don't know what we're doing with this lookalike shit, man. All right. The guy gives fake Benicio slash fake Ian McShane $200. <laughs> he says, go talk to the woman in the room. She's very sweet. And I wondered, is this a child? Yeah. So I said, I don't know if I could have sex with a woman who's coloring a second ago. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where the story was going. Yeah, because I couldn't really see her yeah. at first. I just saw that she was coloring pretty, pretty pictures like Scootsie <laughs> Doubleday's brother. <laughs> Ronnie Doubleday. <laughs> Guy asks if she wants to show him what she's drawing. She'd rather not. He tries to make some small talk, and she just says bedroom. And that's when I thought, oh, God, this is a child. Yeah. I said, ew. She tries to take his clothes off, and he wants to talk first. About what? Study hall? You fucking creep? What are you talking for? You don't want to waste time with talking. How old are you? Hell do you like? Gross. Oh, gross. That's not what I meant. I just want to get to know you. You like 13, 12? And I wrote... I'm uncomfortable. I mean, what the fuck did you just give us? I, I, I was really worried that Maze would file the movie right now. No, you don't have to worry about that. She unbuttons his shirt and, oh shit, he's wearing a wire, film noir. Yep. She starts yelling for Papa. Papa! Papa! And I said, he's pimping out his own kid? Yeah, it's real unsettling. The FBI is now busting in. Papa Leon tries to grab a gun. Guy struggles with them. Papa. It's a fine. It's Papa. Are we doing a fine system now? No, I don't know. <laughs> it fires into the ceiling he's fighting both papa and beatrice papa leon overpowers him throws him to the ground and that's when the fbi breaks down the door and he grabs beatrice as a hostage this is not winning father of the year type material here guy says tranquilo tranquilo lewis pinnock award <laughs> <laughs> this guy says he's not going back Agent Linda is really instigating this thing as literally everybody else tries to calm the situation. Papa says, fuck you. Linda says, fuck you too, pal. <laughs> Linda ass on. He said he's not going back to Mexico. And they say nobody called anybody a JT. Beatrice bites his hand. He recoils. Guy rushes him, pushes him out the window. They fall on a car below and he's dead on the spot. Yep. A lot of that in this movie. I had no idea he was dead. Also, do windows really just break like that? I don't know. We'll try it at the New Orleans live show. We'll try New Orleans, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Tackle you out the second story window. Not second story. High rise. Uh, well, what if I die? Well, that's a risk we're just going to have to take. Officer Exposition shows up to ask guys some questions as they take the body away. Hold on, Sarah. I want to make sure I'm clear on this. The linchpin, the key to your whole investigation is laying in a meat wagon with his brain smashed in. Captain Exposition to you, Zach. He didn't go to Exposition Officer School for four <laughs> years to be called Officer. He didn't go to Exposition Academy. Just Academy, yeah. yeah. Vincent saved lives, sir. That fucker was going out messy. Beatrice says, Papa! I said, Papa almost killed your ass on some bullshit. What are you talking about? Look, I love my dad. My dad, like, had a gun to my head. I had to bite his hand just to escape. Yeah, as soon as that happens, man, you gotta be donezo with that relationship. Says, I don't care, Armistead. What I care about is an 11 month investigation that has taken considerable resources on both sides of the border is now well and truly fucked. Why 11 month investigation? Why not just a year? I don't know. Don't add insult to injury. An undocumented child is not something we build a trafficking case on. 
says, what the fuck is, sir? And he says, we'll talk in the morning. I'm done with my exposition. Walks away. Guy watches Beatrice get put into a cop car in slow motion. Beatrice is staring back at him like, if you just let me suck your dick, all of us would be good right now. And I said, no, no, Beatrice. I don't think that was the look that she gave. That was definitely the look. She's like, this is all your fault. She's giving him that look. I think it was more of a, you killed my dad, you piece of shit. It's all his fault. It's the dad's fault. No, in her mind. For pimping out his daughter. For trafficking children. Yes. No, I know. It's children. It's the worst thing. It's fucking awful. I know. I'm saying. Glad we got that qualifier out of the way. The look she's giving him is like, this is your fault, motherfucker. Mexico City. There we go. Let's not get bogged down. POV riding a horse. I don't know why you guys do this. I hate this first person shot of riding a horse. It's so shaky. I thought we were going to get more of it. I thought we were too. It's the only thing we get in the movie that's POV. Yeah. Yep. Look what we can do. And why does the horse have like devil horns? You know, like the Halloween devil horns you put on. Like, ah, I'm the devil. Yeah. The horse has those on. I'm like, why? Well, we don't know what the routine is. I mean, that's true. Mauricio is giving out instructions to a kid riding. Liam walks up and points a finger gun at him. And they laugh and embrace chemistry. Uh, Let me just say right now, I don't speak Spanish, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say, Neither can this guy. No. His Spanish. Mauricio? Mauricio's Spanish. You know what the actor's name is, I mean? Let me guess. Les Grossman or some shit like that, right? <laughs> it's going to be a Scarface situation. His name is Lee Boardman. You are shockingly close. Oh, wow. <laughs> From Manchester, England. <laughs> That's the exact same number of letters. Andale. Andale, Marisol. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Liam is marveling at how much Marisol has grown. What a sweet kid. Mauricio jokes that horses are expensive, but cheaper than a divorce. <laughs> Better. <laughs> Peaches, horses. What's the opposite of a Lewis Pinnock Award? Because Mauricio's definitely got it, right? <laughs> hey, guys, you know what we need? Walk and talk's position. Yeah, we need some walk and talk's position in this stable. I hate cities, the crowds, the smells, the fucking gueros. No offense. Not taken. The fucking gueros. <laughs> he says, nice work in Guadalajara. <laughs> Country's better now, don't you think? Remember Temelpeas? Those were Zeta scumbags. Crazy days. Fun, though, right? I'm like, I have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. Not exactly my idea of fun, Maurice. Right. You're sensitive. An artista. Jesus, cheer up. Life's good now. More money, less blood. Now he gives him a present from, quote, our friends. Oh. Liam says to get someone else. He's not up for it. And Mauricio says, get up for it. <laughs> <laughs> Jobs in El Paso, where this clear Irishman is apparently from. Hello, exposition. There's a point in this movie where he's like, well, he's definitely American. I was like, definitely? Yeah. Definitely? Nope. Doesn't even try to do the accent anymore. Another reason to say no. He's getting out. No. I can't get over how old Liam Neeson looks in this movie. Uh, the old, he wants to get out of the game. Woman gives him a tea. He asks for an iced tea. Says he's not drunk. He's just tired. No, she got him an iced tea. I know. Well, there wasn't any ice in the cup. That's why I just said a tea. No, no. She got him an iced tea. Says, can I get you anything else? Like, yeah, can I have an iced tea? And she gives a look to Les Grossman. I'm like, yo, man. Les Grossman. What's up with your boy? <laughs> and Les Grossman's like, yo, just let it slide. Memory lapse count number two. I think only two more happen in this movie. <laughs> yeah, put it on iced tea for the rest of the movie. <laughs> Mauricio gives him enough money for two people. He never brings anybody else in on this job. Did they just pay him double? Yep. Well, I think because of who the target was, right? No. Yeah. I think he forgot. <laughs> Memory lapse number three. He literally was like, ah, oh, shit, this is hard. Has to be as a brother in El Paso. Brother to brother. Ha, Maury, are you spying on me? It's our job to know things, Alex. Well, you know he has a brother, <laughs> but you don't know that his brother. You didn't know where he was seeing his brother, huh? His senile. You didn't put that together. Demented Alzheimer's riddled brother. Stop talking this retirement shit. Men like us don't retire. We cut to El Paso. Some cool freeway columns in El Paso. That was my note. Yeah. I like that. A little art there. Yeah. He pulls up near a bakery, stares at it, drives away. Wow. Wondered if we were having a memory lapse there. Sure, that'll come back up later. It's a bakery. He checks into a hotel, asks for the room number again. I'm not counting that as a memory lapse because some people just aren't good with numbers. I'm really good with numbers, but some people aren't. It's written on the key card. He takes pills in the bathroom, wipes the written hotel info off his arm to change the room number on there. Ah, uh, <sighs> memento. I love this movie. He's at the hotel bar. Woman asks if it's too late in the day for a Bloody Mary or too early in the day for a glass of wine as he drinks some water. Other way around. Yep. It's too early in the day for a glass of wine or too late for a Bloody Mary. Guess that depends on what kind of day you want to have 
pimp. That's up to you, isn't it? What do you think he means by that? I wondered, is she a lady of the night or is she just flirting? Didn't know. Uh, really? <laughs> Hanging out in hotel lobbies, being very forward. If you have to wonder, you can't afford it, Zach. Are you alone? Not right now. Excuse me. Liam wants to cut the small talk. The dude in the suit answers the phone, says he looks how you'd expect. This fucking guy. Oh, my God. The dude looks like Michael Bolton from Office Space. I am not going to take any guff about this. I just don't care. He looks more like John Bernthal than he does Michael Bolton from Office Space. No, you think he looks like fucking Big Wayne Jenkins? He looks like Mo. Mo Dakil, yeah. No, he doesn't look like Mo Dakil at all. Mo with curly hair. No, he looks like <laughs> Michael Bolton. And to prove my point, I have riddled the entire movie with Michael Bolton quotes of Office Space. Yeah, that'll prove your point. Starting with when he gets the call, I said... Why should I change? He's the one who sucks. <laughs> <laughs> You're so wrong on this yet again. It's just pointless to even talk about it. I don't even know what to do, man. She says, I'm sure you'll be fine. Gives him a briefcase. People said this would be done quickly. And it will. He smirks. I'm going to need a little more specificity than that. No. No, you won't. You won't. The less you know, the better. Liam walks away. I told those fudge packers I like Michael Bolton. Is he looking at pictures on a Kindle? It looks like a Samsung tablet. Okay. As he's swiping through, one of the pictures is a woman. I said, wait, is that the chick from the bar? Man, his memory is shot. <laughs> no, it's just your face blindness. <laughs> it looks nothing like her. I didn't pause. I just got surprised. Takes out a gun with a laser sight and silencer. That was in the briefcase. Yeah, I love a silencer, man. Big movie for silencers. Not so much for laser sights. No, he uses it. He uses it. When? When he kills people. I'd never see a dot. There's a clear one. Oh, yes. There's a very clear one. Cut to the El Paso processing facility. Guy Pierce walking through lots of families and kids fenced in in cages. He sees Beatrice. Takes her out for questioning. What Papa did, it ain't right. Well, it's Papa, first of all. And I said, Papa is also <laughs> pancake right now. Or as your people call it, una tortilla. Jesus. <laughs> Maze, what should we do for the rest of this episode? I don't know. It's going away in a certain direction I'm not comfortable with. I gotta be honest. I don't know if Amin's got Alzheimer's and he just thinks it's a different time. Because I said it in Spanish, that makes it wrong somehow? You think a pancake is a tortilla? No, I was thinking of something flat. Something flat from the Mexican cuisine is what I was going for. Uh-huh. Papa said it is how you pay to be free. It is better than here. He brought her colored pencil. She shoves it back at him. Special visa for people like her. If she snitches. Papa said never to tell. I wrote that he's a Louis Pinnock lock, right? Because his accent that he's going in and out of is just horrible. Unless Mauricio gets any love. I don't know, man. Louis Pinnock is one of the deepest categories in this movie. She shoves the shit out of those art supplies right back into his chest. Fuck you and your, your take. I'm not going to go on the take, copper. He's going to transfer her to CPS, put her in a group home. It's not a facility. Doesn't have to talk if she doesn't want to. He says, you deserve better than this, Beatrice. And we cut to the Van Camp house. The people from Liam Neeson's tablet. Houses like this look super cool. Dope. Highly impractical. Super impractical. You're washing windows all day long. <laughs> You're not doing it. If you have a house like that, you've got someone to do it. Don't worry, darling. He's on the computer. She walks in, says, looks like she's going solo tonight. Says, I got to get this done. I got a permit filing downtown. Downtown? Yeah, I work, Wendy. Contracts just don't jump in the boat. These windows don't wash themselves. Her perfume fucking stinks. Wash it off before you come home, will you? And I said, ooh. This guy's ass on. And then I said, shout out to Can't Hardly Wait for reminding me of my old favorite pastime. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> He even gets dressed with his ass on. I don't believe that he's getting dressed here. As he's getting ready to leave, a door buzzes. He opens the door and it's Liam with the gun. Pushes him into the house with the gun at his throat. You know why I'm here. Oh shit. Is he going to forget what he came for? Nope. That would have been great though. That's what I was waiting for right there. I was like in the middle of him holding the gun. Like, wait a sec. Why am I here? It's a misunderstanding. It's always a misunderstanding. It's in the safe upstairs. I didn't say anything. It wasn't supposed to go this far. If I'm here, it's gone too far. No. Pay cut. No, 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 no. That's gone too far. Ellis takes him to the safe with his ass on. He opens it up, grabs something. 
As he's about to give it to him, he tries to hit him with a blunt object. Liam stops him, disarms him, and grabs him from behind as we hear a child ask if dad's home. She doesn't look to her right at all. Ever. No. Nor does she wait to hear okay or mm-hmm from her dad or anything. It's a big house. It's right there, and it's clear glass, unless it's like one of those interrogation rooms. The one-sided glass, is that what it is? Two-way glass, whatever that is? They both work. <laughs> one-way glass, two-way glass, one-sided mirror, two-sided mirror. He goes over to the safe and grabs something in a plastic bag, then kind of looks at it. And that's why I said, wait, did he forget what he's supposed to grab? Did he grab the wrong thing? So he chokes him out to keep him from saying anything, right? Put him in a super hold. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I say una tortilla, and that's bad, but he could do that voice, and that's fine. He called it a pancake. No, I was just looking for a flat, some flat food. I thought he was just unconscious. <laughs> so did I. Turns out. Killed him. He's dead. Marked. Killed him dead. Liam almost forgets what he's doing when he grabs that bag from the safe. I'm not counting that as a memory lapse, but he's walking a thin line here. Mm -hmm. The guy who gave him the briefcase gets a text. Michael Bolton. Finished early. Be home for dinner. Michael Bolton watching a woman swim and checks his phone to see a message saying, PC load letter? What the fuck does that mean? Okay, now that's funny. (laughs) Liam gets in the car, pulls out the Kindle, looks at the pics again, and now he's confused. And that counts. Memory lapse count number three. And that's going to be the last one for about an hour and 20 minutes. (laughs) He just forgets while he's looking at the picture of the daughter. The daughter never comes back. That's not the daughter. That's Beatrice. No, that's not Beatrice. It's not? I thought the whole point was to kill Beatrice. She's on the list. And that's why he gets upset. Well, there's a different folder with photos of Beatrice that I think he looks at in a minute. Yeah, I think there's a Beatrice folder and a Van Camp folder. Oh, Okay, never mind. Linda's doing a Babel Spanish lesson. Duolingo! Yeah, but wasn't Babel a sponsor? Helen Hunt is a sponsor for this. Oh my god. People, PSA right now. Stop doing shit on your phones when you're driving. Stop. I'm multitasking. Shut up, bitch. Guy doesn't want her to do it while she's driving because he doesn't want to die today. Nobody's looking at the fucking road in this scene. Not her, not him, nobody. And she's gunning it down these like city streets. Yeah. If she's doing that, he's not watching her do it. He is frightfully eyes on the road. Yeah. Ass on. For everyone. Fuck his face. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I don't like his face. <laughs> Fuck him. That's what I meant. He wants to know how she lives in Texas and doesn't speak Spanish. She's terrible at this, by the way. Good question. And I don't know if that note's about Spanish or acting. They show up to the Van Camps. Crime scene. A lot of arriving at crime scenes in this movie. Yep. Big movie for crime scenes. Ray Stevenson is Danny, the local detective, and he's doing a Texas accent. My name is Carson Phillips, and I'm a P.I. Yeah. yeah. Besides stomping all over my crime scene, he's out there. That guy's Bill Lambier. I just refer to him as Bill Lambier the rest of the movie. (laughs) See, you guys talk about yes and and no buts. I yes and. I laughed at that shit. He doesn't look anything like Bill Lambier, but I like it. You're the one that talks about no buts. You say that's the way to do it is the no but. Whatever. Your Zero Cheeks Acting Academy. What, Linda? This woman hasn't talked to the police. She talked to Gerald Nussbaum. He says, well, I'm sure Special Agent Nussbaum has made it clear to you the more people we have working on this early the better chance we have of solving it. Guy's going to get Detective Lambeer so she doesn't have to repeat herself. Guy asks Lambeer to go outside and take her statement. He lights up a cigarette. Your boss trying to get some or is he already getting it? That's real nice, Mora. Sexualizing the wife of a murder victim. I just wrote blah, 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 blah. Murder? It was a sleeper hold, yep. not a murder hold. Same note, too. No one asked for you guys. He just parachuted in. Guy says, I couldn't agree more. This is your investigation. A stupid face. It has nothing to do with what he just said. At all. Guy says to do this together, and then he'll get Noose Bomb off of Lambeer's back. I don't need to cut a deal. Can you just not be an asshole all the time? Just say yes, Danny. Yes, Danny. Ah, banter. They go out there to talk to Van Camp. Wendy explains she was going out and her husband was going to file permits at nine. And then... Sounds like your husband has something on the side. What? What the fuck? (laughs) The fuck? How do you... One. What kind of... She read the script. That's all. Sexualizing the murder victim is okay, but not his wife? Yeah. Like, oh, he's fucking... Banging, he's smashing broads. Oh, it's, it's no way to talk to a dame. <laughs> no, actually, she said, do you have her number or his? Oh, could be a man that he's fucking. She's terrible at this job. The worst. How does she get to the FBI? She's unhinged. And then they start saying, I don't know how I'm going to break this to the daughter. And I'm like, 
They would check on her? Well, she went to her friend's house. How does she know that? She wasn't there. She had already left for the benefit. That's a good point. At this point, this is a missing child. Yeah. So either she knows about the murder or she doesn't know about the murder, in which case nobody knows where she's at. And we'll never hear from Wendy or Emily Van Camp again. Which I thought for sure would come back. Liam goes to visit someone with Alzheimer's. This guy is (laughs) ass off. He's phenomenal. This guy is so fucking old. (laughs) One look at him and I was like, yo, he's killing it. He might actually have it for all I know. (laughs) That's how ass off he is. Yes. I don't even know. I don't know if this is a real guy. I don't know if this is an actor. Shout out to Nurse Exposition who lets us know that Paul has Alzheimer's, but by virtue of her bringing that up and Liam cutting her off, we now find out that Liam has Alzheimer's too. I know how it starts. That's Liam's brother. He shows him a 1969 coin that he found the other day and made Liam think of him. This is so fucking funny. Clip this whole fucking thing, man. 69's position. 1969 made me think of you. You remember that year? Huh? The draft? The Suns and the Bucks? Both tied for the first round pick. I think of it first overall pick, by the way, not first round pick. Yeah. I felt a little bit like Charlie Day in Chris Pine's office. Down to a coin flip. Phoenix calls heads. Yeah, it was tails. And the goddamn bucks got Lou Alcinder. And his brother just stares. Yeah, I don't watch basketball much anymore. Can't say I remember them. Last time I did. I don't even fucking watch basketball. <laughs> all it took was the sun's not getting Lou Alcinder. Memories, you know? Man, it's all about the memories, man. All about the memory. He puts the coin in his brother's hand. He closes it. He gets up and touches foreheads. Brother completely ass off at this entire scene without saying <laughs> a fucking word. They show the brother trembling. Like he's got fucking hypothermia. Every part of him is trembling and they focus on the coin in his hand like he's jerking off a ghost. Just <laughs> vigorously going to task, right? So I'm like, oh, the brother's going to come in mm-hmm. later into the story. The coin or something. No. This is it. Back to FBI HQ. This bomb says the task force is being reorganized. Detective Marquez is heading back to Mexico. This is the exposition task force. And I thought, racist? <laughs> I didn't know he was. He's a liaison from Mexico. Guy says that they're not done. It's been bothering me this entire time, but I think he's going for Josh Brolin and No Country for Old Men. You guys didn't pick up on that? No. Mean just said like Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer for me, yeah. Yeah, all right. News Bomb says they're done. Val Kilmer and Top Gun Maverick. He spent the last three days getting an earful from Washington. Facts are facts. They got nothing to show for it. Marquez says they got plenty in Mexico. Once they get to the U.S., maybe the ears in Washington just don't want to hear. Yeah, Marquez. It's pretty obvious the appetite for big fish ends at the border. I don't like what you're insinuating, Marquez. Ass on. Not insinuating anything. I was saying it pretty flat out. Papa Leon served rich white men. Gerald insists the well's gone dry. He says that's the word. He says the word? Is that what you people build cases on in Juarez? You people. Didn't like that. By the way, at this point, because they keep calling him Papa Leon, I was like, well, maybe that's his name and it wasn't his actual daughter. But then later we find out it is his actual daughter. Yeah, I kind of went back and forth on that as well. Guy and Newsbomb argue about witness slash severely traumatized undocumented minor in detention, how useful she can be. The whole thing about the visa, he wasn't authorized to give it to her or offer it to her. If he wants to help a kid like Beatrice, then play ball on the Van Camp homicide. He agrees. I was thinking this whole time Newsbomb was like, Yeah, me too. Kind of is. Well, sort of. He's not as much as Bill Lambeer is, right? Bill Lambeer is definitely dirty. Bill Lambeer is super dirty, yeah. But the fact that the Van Camps called him direct is very fishy. It is. That's the one thing we could have used a little exposition on. It's true. Are they old family friends? Are they working together? Was he, in fact, fucking Mrs. Van Camp? Good questions. Shutting down the case doesn't make it so there's no white Pedroti. We've got Pierce driving. Right next to one car back is Liam driving. What are the odds? Little did I know that Liam was tailing Pierce's SUV. Did Liam know that? Now he's got the photos of Beatrice on the tablet. Guy's dropping her off at a foster home. She's a witness and a victim. Serena will reach out to social services. Why is Guy Pierce talking so closely to this foster home worker? They're maybe six inches apart. I thought they were going to fuck. Okay. You didn't think that? (laughs) So much tension. I thought like, oh, that's his ex-wife or something or what? I didn't know. Isn't that weird that fucking Liam Neeson is 
tailing Guy Pierce and decides to park in front of him. In front of him, yep. Did he forget? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. He didn't realize why he pulled up to that home? I don't know. Beatrice shows him the drawing that he asked about before. It's a desert. I draw deserts. Pretty, pretty pictures. <laughs> All three kinds of deserts. <laughs> wow. All three major forms of deserts. He says, so you do. How about that? She tells him to keep the drawing, and now it's nighttime. Liam is milling about in the house with a flashlight. He's really stomping around for an assassin. <sighs> He's making a fuckload of noise. At this point, I wondered if Van Camp was fucking the little girl, too. Good questions. Is that the perfume smell that they were sensing or whatever? He sort of sneaks into her room loudly. He's got the gun on her while she's asleep. He looks at the desert drawings. Then she wakes up scared. She says that she didn't say anything. She begs him not to shoot, and it works. He walks out, and he gets in the car, and his hands are shaking, and he's just sitting out there. But on the tablet, he saw that she was a kid. No, but the pretty, pretty pictures. The pretty, pretty pictures. That's what sold him. Saw some artistic talent. He's just sitting out there, though, by the way. Like, what if they called the cops? Yep. You got to drive off. He forgot. He forgot. No matter where you go in life, always keep an eye out for Johnny the tackling Alzheimer's patient. What's that supposed to mean? Who am I? <gasps> We're out at a place by the highway. Michael Bolton walks into the bathroom. Well, first he's alarmed that there's a black man sitting out there. <laughs> An old black man <laughs> in a cowboy hat. He is real alarmed. He's like, what the fuck's going on? What the hell is this? He starts pushing open bathroom stall doors. And then out of nowhere, I have no idea where <laughs> Liam Neeson was hiding. He appears out of thin air and slams him into the wall. He throws him through the toilet. Through the toilet, breaks the toilet. She's a child. And that's the problem. I won't do it. You could people know who the contract was for. I fucking won't do it. Are you deaf? 20 CB. You don't get to ask people that anymore. No, that's out. I don't think you can. Wow. Oh, maybe I'll call Mexico City. See what they have to say about that. No, no. No. You're going to call the contract off. <laughs> the fuck I am. You're an employee. I don't take fucking... Ooh. You're a cashier. You're a hitman. He punches him in the face. Michael Bolton says, every week you say you're not going to do the job, and yet you're still here. <laughs> Liam punches him in the face, as May said, shows him a Ziploc bag with stuff in it. You want this? Call the contract off. You really don't know what you're playing with. Oh, yes, I do. Liam gets Borden's wallet, looks at his license, reads off his address. <laughs> I feel like he does this in a lot of movies. I also like how the premise is that he's supposed to just remember this shit. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this is. Oof. Fuck. What was his name again? Where'd he live? <laughs> Better write it down on your forearm, Liam. Girl stays alive or you're answerable to me, asshole. Cut to Monica Bellucci. Getting out of the car. Oh. She's on an exposition phone call prepared to give a giant donation, but it can't be from her. She's on an ass on phone call. Holy shit. No pictures or awards. Don't name it the Devana Sealman Wing. It must simply be the Sealman Wing. I'm sure you understand. Giving like this is generational. Thank you. There you go, Zach. She was ass on in that phone call, but the Photoshop pictures of her doing charity that are hanging on the wall, she's completely ass off. Yep. Sitting down with the kids. I'm also not convinced it's her actual face. Oh, man. You know what? I am. I'm file. I love Monica Bellucci. Oh, I love her. Yeah, absolutely. Love her. She gets into her massive office, picks up a call that's on hold. Thought I was clear. Never on the office number. And she just hangs up. So ass on. Then she opens a laptop. Flips him to an encrypted number that pops up on the computer. <laughs> With the face ID. Problem solved. <laughs> he knows. That's a bit vague. He knows my name, where I live, and he won't do the job, and he's got Van Camp's flash drives. Michael Bolton is panicking, explains to her that they're not going to go to White Collar Resort Prison. No, 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 no. <laughs> they're going to end up at Pound Me in the Ass Prison. Also, as he's on this phone call, he's curling like a two and a half pound dumbbell. Yep. What is that? No pain, no gain, Zach. This dude likes to work <laughs> out when he makes calls. Like Linda, he likes to multitask. He said he wasn't going to be a problem. I'm going to call Mexico City. That's one solution, an obvious and unsettled one. What does he want? Just considering his point of view. There's something to be said for that. Every line she has feels like a placeholder line. Oh, we'll punch this up later. And they just never did. He doesn't trust him. Knows what's on that drive. Randy's pretty obvious about his quirks. Randy! This is not a conversation she's comfortable having with Borden. 
And he's just like, oh, Jesus Christ, he knows about the girl, about me. He starts panicking like Michael Bolton in Office Space. One little mundane mistake. I always do this. Yeah, I would say this is a, <laughs> a mundane fucking mistake. All right, back to the hotel bar. Lady of the night, talking to a drunk guy. He's babbling. Oh, he's drunk. He's ass off is what he is. And he's trying to find a girl who's rooting for Morocco. <laughs> he just wants a blowy. Maybe we should go upstairs and make some sort of deal, because at the end of the day... All I want is a blowy. Blowy asshole. Keep your voice down. He says he will, but they still got to negotiate. That's when Liam walks over in a plaid shirt and says to leave her alone. <laughs> Whoa, well, <laughs> wait a minute, Pop. First of all, this ain't no lady, which you're about to find out right about now. Am I right, babe? No, you're drunk. Go to bed. Do me a favor and get the fuck out of here. Then Neeson slaps him, slams his head on the bar, and this dude is ass off when he gets up. Golden dumpster nominee because I don't even know what the sequence was that he did to this motherfucker. I know. It was so quick. Pop, pop, pop. That's the Liam Neeson action shit, man. He's so good with his hands. Yeah, man. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> fuck you. Ass off. He just stumbles away. He goes back to his drink. She comes over and says, thank you, then apologizes. He's just a drunk at a bar, being an asshole in front of a beautiful lady. Happens all the time. So are you from Morocco? <laughs> they cheers and cut to a sweaty guy, Pierce, drinking wine at his home, a framed pic of his family. But he's alone. Hello, exposition. Linda's off drinking with Marquez, brings him tequila shots. Yeah, Linda. Salud. Amor y dinero y tiempo que gastarlo. Para. Para. <laughs> oh, come on, at least I'm trying, Hugo. 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 She's going to Hugo give my man a blowy. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Marquez is mad about the task force. He starts babbling about St. Inez, a pendant he has on his necklace six times. Why six? You don't want to know. I call this Hugo's position. I call this St. Exposition. <laughs> I thought this movie was about memory. <laughs> a young girl got taken by a soldier who liked to party with the narcos. None of it matters. They served uh, his indictment, but he just got transferred. They killed everybody, hung it in front of his office window. Meanwhile, Linda's over here getting real familiar with that fucking mm -hmm. touching his necklace and shit. Mm hmm. Well, that's why she's trying to learn Spanish, right? She likes this dude. Again, something that I thought would come up again in this movie, but <laughs> alack and alas. What does come up again is the prayer that he tells her to learn. Cut to the lady of the night and Liam in bed. The Liam of the night. He's Little Spoon. He is Little Spoon, and he's having a nightmare about killing the girl. Trembling and twitching. With his ass off. Golden Dumpster ass off nominee <laughs> Liam Night Terrors. <laughs> he dreams about killing bad trees and falls out of bed. Little did we know that he's prophetic. The bed was so short. And the bed is so close to the ground. It's really close to the ground. Well, I mean, he can't fall off a high bed. He's 70. He break his hip. Yeah. He falls out. He wakes up. She tries to comfort him. Who, who are you? Amaya. We're at the hotel. Hotel? Oh, hotel. Memory lapse number four. I said, I need to start running this game ASAP. <laughs> Once you've already fucked? Yes. <laughs> You're going to sell that you've got dementia. Amin's going to get into the Alzheimer game. <laughs> Who are you? All right. Cut to a crime scene. Pierce shows up. Beatrice has been shot in the forehead. He's not a good actor. Guy Pierce is a terrible actor. No, come on, man. He's a good actor. Name one thing he's been in that's good. Memento. Memento. LA Confidential. No, that he's good in. He's good in Memento. Fuck out of here. He's good in it. He's pretty good in Iron Man 3, even though that movie is kind of bad. Oh, oh my God. Get out of here. Great in Iron Man 3. You don't like Iron Man 3, Maze? I think it's the worst Iron Man. No. Whoa. Hold on. Even I would think 2 is. Iron Man 2 is a piece of shit, man. 2 is really bad. Man. We don't talk about Iron Man 2. We just fucking forgot about it. But Iron Man 3 is fucking awesome. Memory. My man, goddamn, uh, uh what's his name? <laughs> ben Kingsley <laughs> as the Mandarin. You forgot for a second your memory. Alzheimer's. My memory. My man, goddamn, what's his name? It's <laughs> a universal <laughs> name right there. Beatrice gotten killed. Liam is getting dressed. That was nice. Maybe next time you're in town, we could. Oh. I won't be back. I won't be back. All right. All right. Good <laughs> luck, then. And you. Zero <laughs> cheeks on the hook. Oh, excuse me. The sex worker. Good Lord. <laughs> on the hook? I corrected myself. She's a sex worker. <laughs> you did? Because 
just said it anyway. Well, no. In the middle of saying that she's got zero cheeks. <laughs> Somehow you're more misogynistic than misogynistic Bane. Amin's so mad that he didn't come up with misogynistic Bane. Oh, my God. Yo, that's such a great character, man. It is an awesome character. They're yeah. back in the kitchen. <laughs> he sees a news report about Beatrice. He asked Maya, was I here last night? Start shaking her. He sees some ass on news caps position is what he sees. How much ass on could this woman have in this short, short scene? Tough to do. And Maze, this is why me and Zach praise and acknowledge the gifts of the shit bag in the beginning and the shit bag's <laughs> mom. Small window. They are bringing that shit. Compare and contrast with Amelia Klein, I believe is her name. The El Paso reporter. Fucking awful. He's grabbing her shoulders and she says sh that he's hurting her. And he's shaking the shit out of her throughout this whole scene. Like the scene from Airplane. Yeah. I thought he's going to start slapping her. Was I here last night? Was I here last night? And he says, listen to me very carefully. I don't know who you are. I don't know what movie I'm in. But what I do know <laughs> is I'll have French toast, please. And God damn it, the buck's got out cinder. You got to leave now. You were never here. We never met. Stay away from the hotel for a while. A long while. But then he tells her to stay in the room and not open it for anyone. Yeah, that's, that's very confusing. He forgot. Conflicting messages. Well, I'm sure she'll be able to clarify in just a little bit. Marquez gets into a taxi. Oh, man, I miss those little TV screens in the taxi. Still got it in New York. This TV screen also has the news exposition. Yep. And he gets right back out of the cab. Liam's walking through a parking garage stairwell with his gun out. Sees a camera, does the absolute worst job of sneaking over to a car while just wildly brandishing a weapon in public. And then I wrote, never mind, just remembered they're in Texas. Nothing out of the ordinary here. <laughs> Sees a device attached under his car, and then all of a sudden, Mauricio's firing a gun at him. Maya runs out after him. Why? You forgot your pills. Why? You forgot your I'm gonna die now pills. Ah. She gets smoked right in the neck. She's just standing there, standing completely still. It gets popped in the neck. <laughs> Shout out to Mauricio who says, what can I say? I'm a good shot. <laughs> she drops the pills. He catches her. But then he's just holding this body. Yeah. Can't defend himself. And Mauricio runs and hides. Yep. Mauricio, what are you doing? The pills clatter in slow motion. You could see the anger well up in his face. He's ass off. Oh, he's pissed. As he says, you killed the last piece of ass I got in this world. And for that. You must perish. He gets up, starts firing at Mauricio. Unloads on that motherfucker. Sets off a car alarm. Liam is just walking upright slowly out in full view. Mm -hmm. Unloading, though. Wait a goddamn minute. Did 70-year-old Liam Neeson just jump down a section of the garage? Yeah. saw that shit, didn't you? <laughs> it was such a blur. I didn't know what happened. I thought he fell. He punches the shit out of Mauricio, breaks his wrist to disarm him, slams his head into the side mirror, then through the driver window. Punches him in the back of the neck at one point, too. I don't like how this was shot. Each action cut, cut, from a cut, different cut. angle. Cut, 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 cut. Oh, I love that. I think it's great. I enjoyed the bar fight scene a lot more. Like, I like to see it look like he's actually doing this shit as opposed to like, and stop. I don't mind a quick cut with hand-to-hand -hand stuff. It reminded me of like those TikTok videos where people weren't smart enough to edit the end point. So you still see them reach out towards the phone to pause it. Yeah. And then reach back when they hit play again. Also, when we do a screen recording in life, can you just clip out the part where you went back to the menu to stop the screen record. Yeah, I hate when they do that. And crop properly. Is that so hard? Chop. Chop. Properly. It's not that hard. He puts Maya's body in the trunk, and I thought, well, that's a terrible idea, not realizing Mauricio was tied to the steering wheel. It's still a terrible idea. It's your car, dumbass. When did you go soft, Alex? <laughs> They'll end you for this. Happy retirement, Maury. He gets about, I don't know, four and a half feet away from the car before he blows it up. Yep. The cool walk away. Bigger explosion than man on fire. Back to Bellucci. Doctor's checking her heart. Has the heart of a 35-year-old. This scene is crazy. I do not <laughs> understand what this means in connection to everything else. I do. Oh, he's horny. He's horny. What an H. At this rate, she'll live to be 130. I'll give you $5 million to make it 135. You said yes, I'd fire you. Uh -huh. You know, if I said yes... I'd want you to. Her grandfather was Abrusezi. He lived to be 104. Nobody cares. Those regions along the Adriatic and Okinawa, Japan, they call those blue zones. What is happening? Places that generally have a higher percentage of centenarians. I'm aware, Joseph. Who cares? But she knows that already. But why? Nutrition? Lack of pollutants in the air? 
There is no reason we have to age to decay. Everything could be reprogrammed, modded. Why shouldn't human health be the same? DNA is an algorithm. When we find out that she's just a real estate mogul, I thought she was in like pharmaceuticals. Biotech or whatever, yeah. Yeah. I thought when it said blue zone, I was like, oh, that's where they get the best blowies. Or the worst, because that's where the balls are blue. Oh. He says, look, I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money. And she says, especially when so much of it ends up in your pocket with enough champagne to feel the now. <laughs> Cut to another crime scene. This is the most confusing scene of all. Why was the car in the street? That was my number one question. I think it's just a different accident. It's a different <laughs> crime scene why because they're always showing up to crime scenes every single thing with guy pierce crime scene's position so at first i like you zach like how the fuck end up in the street but then when we get the wide shot you see this is like in the middle of a freeway so far from any parking garage or hotel or downtown setting so then i'm like did the car (laughs) like a cartoon just explode explode and fly 500 miles (laughs) That was a good sound effect. Uh, part of me that wondered if it kind of got bad boys tooed off the parking garage, you know, like that one guy on the door. But then there's one throwaway line. A cop walks up and says, the guy blew a .24. Drunk as a skunk. It is a drunk driving accident that has nothing to do yep. with the movie. It's just that Guy Pierce had to go see Bill Lambeer here. He says, I don't know what the fuck is going on in this town. Swear to God, it's getting more like Afghanistan every day. <laughs> what? Yeah, the drunk driving accident doesn't make sense, but then he shows him the burnt up pictures. Go test the pills, the prescription, everything goes, the lab's on it. We may not be fancy, Vincent, but we ain't dumb. This may not be CGI City, (laughs) but we can still run chem tests. I know it's not sophisticated, but like, couldn't they have just looked at what the prescription was for? The pill bottle said? Yeah, Yeah, that would have been one way to approach it. But they've never seen anything like that before, so got to run the test. Chem test. Not any test. Got the guy Pierce playing pool in a bar. Marquez shows up, says he couldn't go back. They say they don't love you in Mexico, and he laughs with his ass on. Yeah, that was some terrible banter there. Banter! You're not looking for my permission to stay, are you? Linda said I had to. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Marquez says they're the only ones that care about the girl. Says I can do things you and her can't as a concerned citizen. <laughs> From Mexico. Hey. Okay, a concerned Mexican citizen. Future callback on the things he can do that they can't. Cut to Borden on the treadmill. Always working out. He's booking it. Car pulls up outside. Hooded figure walks towards him. He's just staring through the window. It's Liam. Michael Bolton panics when he sees the gun. He doesn't panic at all. He doesn't see the gun. Points the laser pointer right at his forehead, I mean. Oh, yeah. How did you miss that? This is the one. And he fires a bullet right through the window into his forehead. He's dead. He crashes off the treadmill hilariously. Amazingly. And there's a girl in the foreground, doesn't even notice because of her headphones. Love the sound of a gun with a silencer in movies. That Pew. Liam's walking the street, breaks into that old bakery he drove by earlier. There are pigeons everywhere in this old dilapidated piece of shit. He pops some pills and he's listening to the... Where did he get more pills? Ellis Van Camp hard drive files. That's a good question. He forgot he lost them, so he had them. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I promise you I have no reason to say anything unless you give me one. Alucci's on that tape. What you're doing right now is incredibly stupid, Ellis. I hope you understand that. Says you left me no choice. I won't be cut out. This doesn't have to be ugly. Blackmail is really ugly. We are not negotiating. You have crossed the line from which there is no return. So Liam writes, Van Camp, woman, client, question mark? In a hurry? (laughs) On his forearm? (laughs) Alone. I asked, does he have Parkinson's too? Why the fuck is his handwriting so shaky? No, 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 no. That's part of it. Is it? Isn't it? Welcome to Cinephobe. So the only things he's written on his forearm are his hotel room and this vague clue. Which literally, he sees a photo of her on the next hard drive. So why even write this shit down? Because he has fucking Alzheimer's memory. (sighs) He's going to forget. There's a horribly photoshopped photo of Randy. Oh my gosh. So bad. With Papa Leon and Beatrice. He's smacking the shit out of her. As he's slapping the shit out of her. Oh my God. One more flash drive. It's Randy taking off his shirt. Hmm. Unbuttoning his pants. Liam's got the same look as Nick Cage in 8mm. Stole it directly from him. Great acting. Future Centerfo. Close the laptop and discuss. No, it's not. We can't do We can't make that fun. Does it qualify? Of course. <laughs> you know what to do, internet. No. Cut to the crime scene at the gym. Detective Lambeer says another 32 caliber, and he's guessing it's also going to have a jacket with suppressor markings on it. Jackalit? A jackalit. <laughs> 
Guy thinks he's right. Marquez thinks it's a hitter cleaning up some shit. Or I don't know. News bomb shows up. Marquez leaves. Last time I checked, Sarah, you were working the Van Camp murder. Last time I checked, sir, I work for the FBI. Ooh. Thinks there's a connection between Beatrice, the Jane Doe, and William Borden. Three people likely killed with the same weapon. If there really is a Mexican killer tearing ass through town, we might want to get ahead of that. Tearing ass through town. <laughs> Ripping in the tearing. No, I thought tearing ass is like, yeah, I had a lot of Mexican food. Racist. Oh, so you'd rather have them being rapists. What? Yeah, too many pancakes, right? I mean, no, also racist. <laughs> Jeez, supercharge all that. All right. News Bomb says, okay. But he needs updates twice a day. Twice? Why? What is that going to do? He's just trying to stay informed and involved. He's an idiot. Cut to Lambeer. Lab came back on the pills. Diffidel. Alzheimer's drug. Your shooter's losing his shit. Okay. Is the wife inside? Yeah. Keep your hands away from the cage on that one. I don't know if it's medicine or just plain crazy. The closed caption spelled losing his shit. L-O-O-S-I. Losing had the same thing. Fuck you, you stupid fucking millennial fuck or Gen Z. Mm -hmm. That's some shit that's only happened in the last like 20 years of internet where people don't know how to spell losing all of a sudden. Yeah. Fucking morons, man. Like they're like, loo, loo. they're sounding it out. Like, Gotta be two O's and it go loo. Stupid fucks. Read a book. Pick up a book one time. How about that? Learn how to fucking spell. Wife of Borden is is accused by Lambier of being crazy. Uh, Guy and you go go to talk to her. The drunk wife. We're sorry for what happened. She's as part of life, right? That's what they say. Hasn't really sunk in. FBI, fancy. Rule number one to being the drunk wife, have a drink in hand at all times and talk in a sing-songy voice. You and Agent 2? Kind of sway back and forth. Liaison from Mexico. What's Mexico have to do with William? He hated that place. Racist. That's what they're hoping to find out. Wonder if there's any unusual behavior from her husband lately. Will's behavior hasn't changed in 20 years. She wants dick. Wonder what kind of law he did. Real estate. Any ties to prostitution. Bill paying for it doesn't seem like him. I know Wendy. I see her at the same events. It's all one big cocktail party up here. You like cocktails, detective? Margaritas, pina coladas. She's just naming cocktails. Pina coladas? Cuba Libre! Racist. Same note, too. When she asks, <laughs> says all these things so suggestively, my note was Guy Pierce says, oh shit, you're talking to Hugo. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> all right. Randy. 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 Comes into Bellucci's office and quickly lets us know that's his mom. Mommy. Mama. 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 Tries to Ma. calm him down. <laughs> Tells him to leave El Paso immediately. Take the company plane. What about tomorrow night? It's all been arranged. She says he'll fly to Geneva tomorrow after the party. Check into a rehab there. If things get connected to him, this will buy them time to get the best lawyers while he's working on his issues. Besides, you need help, Randy. <laughs> That's not how alibis work, by the way. Just want to throw that out. There. That's how none of that works. He's trying to cry with his ass on. He's sorry. She knows he is. Oh, he's terrible. I love this, though. Oh, this killer's getting close. You should go. But my sex party's tomorrow night. Okay, after the sex party. Do you guys think that if you were an Italian super strong independent woman built this empire rich powerful connected all that shit right that you would name your son randy my clearly not italian son yes <laughs> i think i would it's because she moved to texas and married a good old boy named dutch i thought was named randiamo or some shit like that <laughs> randizzi randioli <laughs> all right back to the fbi ballistics came back jane doe and beatrice same gun but not borden 232s. Two shooters. Liam calls Guy, asks if he took Beatrice to the home, introduces himself as David Marshall, and they start trying to trace the call. All right, this is just like Honest Thief. Exactly like it. It's fantastic, man. Question for you. I know that phone tracing tech exists. Uh huh. Does the tech exist where they tell you 30 more seconds and we'll have it? Like there's a countdown? Is there a progress bar on the shit? Yes, I think so. That's always been in movies. But does that exist in real life? I don't work for the FBI. I feel like they could, well, you worked in the courthouse. I thought maybe you were seen some shit. You think <laughs> the third district appellate court of California is the same as the FBI? We didn't trace calls there. You had wiretaps? No wiretaps? It's an appellate court. You know, an appeal, the wiretap? 
Real courts don't even have wiretaps. A judge will approve it, but they don't do it from the court. So what the fuck did you do? I did clerical work. I did mailroom work. I recorded the hearings in the court one week a month. I did all kinds of shit. Sounds like you didn't do shit. You know, I started my writing career there. I would <laughs> oh work God. really hard from 8.30 to 10.30 in the morning. And then I kind of just coast the rest of the day and work on my website. And they wonder why the justice system is broken. <laughs> I apologize to all those taxpayers in California from 2007 to 2009. 2006 to 2009. I forgot Oakley was 03 to 06. Question. Why would you why call? Why would I leave Oakley for the appeals court? That's a great question. I mean. No, no. Why would you call from outside of the place you're calling? Well, you forgot. If you're calling anonymously. Because <laughs> you don't give a fuck. I can't keep doing your job for you is the first thing he says. Borden, Van Camp, what they did to children. You're not doing anything about it. Are you saying you killed William Borden and Ellis Van Camp? Yes. An honest hitman. Honesty. Is such a lonely word. Everyone is so untrue. What about the girl, Beatrice? Not the girl. That was Mauricio, the man in the car. You're too slow to make them pay. They're too rich. Who's too rich? The lawyer, the client. Who's the client? He sees Liam outside the bench. <laughs> Liam asks, Did you know her? The girl, Beatrice. A little. Did you care? I certainly did. I want to believe you're a good man, Vincent. I'm the bad man. I'm the bad man. Have been for a long time. An honest hit man. But they have to be punished. If I can't finish this, you have to. They trace him to the park like right outside the building. And then they run outside and they find the burner phone on the bench. Ass on for this office worker watching them run downstairs. She gets cut off in the office. Like, mm. He's fucking with us. Linda swears so unnaturally. That was my note that I had coming up, which is... They're doing that thing that drove me crazy about Deb, Dexter's sister, and Dexter, where they just make a female character unnecessarily foul-mouthed, and it doesn't sound natural when she says it. Oh, fuck. Motherfucking suckbag. You fucking fucking nugget. She swears in basically every line. But I can't tell, is that the writing or is that her? That's the writing. It's probably both. Because the writing's not good. I think that's her because she's British. What? Spoiler alert for the trivia. There's not a single American-born actor in this movie. What? That's why everybody's eligible for Lewis Pinnock. But Linda, I'm wondering if that's it because she does not a curse. Mm. Not her natural accent, so everything is going to sound weird. Another question, Liam Neeson, how many burner phones does this guy have? As many as it takes. That's such a, mm, I know, but still, man, just laying them out there everywhere. Guy tells him, he's telling us we're way too slow. He puts together that Liam is taking out the traffickers that they can't, leaving us breadcrumbs, proving a point. Cut to Mrs. Borden swimming and Marquez just shows up. Ugo. Big thumbs down an indoor pool. Nah, man, that's wealth. Is it wealth? That's wealth, man. No, no, no. Wealth would be like an indoor-outdoor pool. You know, like those garage doors would come down and now it becomes indoor, but you could open it up and shit. Like the pool is in an area that is semi-covered and that cover can come all the way down. Like a garage door. Oh, no, that's not wealth. No, 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 no. Do you want a humid ass room at all times in your house? The true wealth is having both, but wealth is having an indoor pool. Is wealth having Dr. Manhattan sitting at the other end of the pool just watching this shit? What is that? Is that supposed to be Buddha? The light blue glowing figure? Oh, the blue fucker? Yeah. Tobias? I'm afraid I just blew myself. She asked how long he's been watching her. Watchman. I just got here. You shouldn't leave the gate open. Whatever will be, will be. You're a strong swimmer. I'm out of shape. We get some Olympics position. Uh, Alternate for the 92 team, 17 years old. Best time of my life. Swims position. It's back. You're a strong swimmer. <laughs> I thought he was going to follow it up with, I should introduce you to some other strong swimmers. By 96, she lost a second. That was it. Instead of a Wheaties box and a dashing husband in LA, she ended up here in Texas. Is that what she thinks happens to Olympic swimmers? Yep. But he pours himself some wine as he gets her wine. And I remembered, yo, he's not on duty. Yeah, that's true. He can do all of this shit. He can get drunk. He can fuck her. I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. And he drops this line. Well, I'm not here to clean your pool. And I said, Attaway, Bobby. 
<laughs> that's the start of a porn right there, man. I was like that scene that's a meme where it's a bunch of people at a bar and they're clearly watching some sporting event on the screen, but people will Photoshop different events on the screen that makes a whole bar erupt. Yeah. That's how I was. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yes. Yes, Ugo, take that shit down. Take that rich pussy down, my man. And then she props her tits and I'm like, oh my God, it's about to happen. And he says, I didn't come here for that either. And I said, wait, what? So confused. And then she's mad. She's like, get the fuck out of here. She never heard any names, but heard her husband was nervous on the phone. He's got free reign to blow her back out. All right. He relays all that to Guy. Borden isn't listed on any documents for Sealman Corp. You realize we're talking about one of the most powerful real estate moguls in the country, right? Color me skeptical, but I don't think one of the biggest real estate moguls in the country would be based out of El Paso, Texas. Sexist. No, sexist. I'm talking about El Paso. And by the way, they both already knew that. She didn't give them any new information. They're like, yeah, we know. What's happening? Linda asked if he got proof. Did you bang her at least? (laughs) I mean, if you're going to take the word of a half-drunk trophy wife, you might as well get something out of it, right? And that's when I realized that Amin is Linda. Two things. <laughs> One, I thought this was to set up the eventual romantic angle between Linda and Ugo. Yeah, she's clearly in her feelings. That's a very specific kind of reaction. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's why. And that's why he didn't bang this one or whatever. But then the other thing I said is, another reason to blow her back out. Everyone else already thinks you did it so you might as well like why carry that guilt with you without being guilty you might as well be guilty of it. <laughs> <laughs> guy asked if she elaborated on the man from mexico city linda says to shut up orton wasn't a Devana sealman lawyer he was her son's lawyer randy uh, she's going hyperdrive exposition he's also a real estate mogul huh how did that work out He owns the central processing facility. Oh, fuck. Where they sent Beatrice. Hey, in case you haven't noticed, they send a lot of people there. Wasn't the first time Ellis Van Camp was the builder of that facility. Everyone associated with her are all dead except for Randy. And Guy thinks he's going to kill Randy. Cut to a yacht party. Yo, that yacht is nice, man. This song is terrible. Awful. You see, right now, Viva España, Ibiza. Got my boy on the deck tonight, and it's deep up in this house tonight, honey. You hear me? Deep in the night, where the people come to play. Deep in the night, where the play is going to play. Deep in the night, where the music's here to stay. Deep in the night, when the music don't go away. Linda's there doing a horrible job of blending in. She couldn't be more of a narc. Well, she could be. She could be Marquez, who quickly shows up and sore thumbs his way through there. Yes, if Linda's drinking on duty. And she's like, this is so far away from official. What is she drinking? Champagne. And enough champagne to fill the Nile. <laughs> hey! Oh, champagne! Randy's in the hot tub. The doctor's there. And Guy gets a text from Linda that says, all good. Just drunks, druggies, and hoes. Good. And I said, excuse me, ma'am, weren't you finger-blasting Ugo's necklace just a couple of scenes ago? Now you want to call other people hoes? Randy's just walking around in a bathroom. He pushes a worker into a room. Randy, you dipshit. Guy's heading in. He finds shards of a pill bottle? Why? And then he knows that Liam's there? What? So he just Leroy Jenkins his way onto the boat. But Liam's just <laughs> leaving pill bottles everywhere he goes. Not he's... even full bottles, just pieces. Like Hansel and Gretel, so he could get back to the car. Yeah, that's how he gets back to the car. Well, I've got to tear this up and tear that up. And I write on my forearm, pill bottle shards. Guys. It's his memory. Come on. <laughs> the girl in the sailor outfit goes in the bathroom. Liam's in there waiting. Tells her to lock the door when he leaves. He likes bathrooms, doesn't he? Loves a bathroom, man. Loves to hang out in the bathroom. And Randy is lying butt naked, face down on the bed. Good <laughs> ass in the sky. Eyes closed, man. Liam comes out, puts a pillow over his head, shoots him just like that. Pop, pop. That easy, man. You scum. Why don't you just shoot him now? I mean, I'll go get a gun. We'll shoot him together. It'll be fun. Bang. Dead. Done. Guy and Linda running around. They find Randy's naked ass. Guy goes outside, sees Liam walking away off in the distance. Now they're in a boatyard. He's tracking them. Marquez is there too. Liam's hiding. Guy hears a car locking system beep. Runs over to a car with nobody in it. And Liam just got the drop on him. Puts a gun to his head from the side. 
Put it down. And he introduces himself. Attaboy. Attaboy, Bob A. You're Vincent, aren't you? I'm Alex. Alex Lewis. You know what these people did to that child, right? This is only too well. I've done crazy things, but you don't hurt children. Ever. Okay. What's going on here, man? He's got a code. This is the code that they talk about in the synopsis. Guy wants to have a talk and Liam says, no, no time. time for that. We all have to die, Vincent. What's important is what you do before you go. You've been killing people. Constantly. For a living. Yeah. Marquez runs up screaming and pointing a gun. He's unhinged, man. But like, it's personal for him, right? I get it. And again, he's not on duty. He doesn't have to adhere to the rules of law enforcement or whatever the supposed rules of law enforcement are. They're all dirty. Guy tells you go to put the gun down. Liam says they'll never know the truth if he dies. Maze, please clip in from Money Talks. Hand over the gun now, Franklin. Hand over the gun! I ain't handing over shit. You hand over that gun right now. I know y'all ain't gonna shoot me when I put the gun out. I'm gonna shoot you if you don't hand over that well, gun. Well, I'm gonna shoot then. No, Fuck I'm it, gonna shoot you, I promise you. Hand over the gun! Shoot, 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 shoot then, shoot! shoot. Hey, hey man, give him the gun now! Shoot. Hey, William, shut the fuck up! Fuck you then, I ain't putting nothing now. Now look. Nobody's going to shoot you if you hand me the gun, Hatchet. You got to trust somebody now. Come I don't trust nobody. Lower the gun. Lower the gun and just you hand, lower your gun. hand it over to you me. Lower, you lower your gun. On, nobody wants to die. Liam gets to the car, drives away. Marquez just wildly shoots at the car. Oh, he fucking unloads on him. And then he and Guy are just screaming at each other. He's just screaming in Spanish. Puta madre. Puta te madre. Puta madre. Cops are flying through the streets. Liam gets out of the car. He's bleeding, apparently. He got shot. He hot wires another car. Bronco. He turns the wheel violently. He's grunting and grimacing, and he pulls out into oncoming traffic like Helen Hunt. He almost Helen hunts it. Yeah. Cut to News Bomb's office. Guy shows up. Oh, Captain Exposition strikes again. You know, I quit drinking 15 years ago, but right now I can actually taste the scotch in the back of my throat. Bellucci is not happy with them. Pierce says that Liam has been way ahead of them, probably on the boat before the party began. Who is this fucking guy, Vince? Alex Lewis. I can tell you he's American. Motherfucker, what? <laughs> Film noir? What part of talking to him made you think he's American? That's all I can tell you. He's from El Paso. He's no doubt a contractor. I don't think these have all been hits. He wants revenge for Beatrice. Liam is asleep in a car and a motorcycle cop stops behind him. So he taps on the window, wakes him up. He rolls down the window. Liam incoherently mumbling his ass off. Sir, you all right? Have you been drinking tonight, sir? Paul. Paul with his sons. My question was, is he pretending to be drunk to throw this guy off and then to kill him? In which case, Alex would be ass off in this scene as well as Liam Neeson. Or is this the Alzheimer's and he's not acting? I thought it was the Alzheimer's at first. And so my next two notes, cop sees the gun with the blood, steps back, and Liam pops him. Alex Lewis, ass off. Not Liam. Alex Lewis. Alex Lewis. Okay, I had the same note, but I wasn't sure for a second. No, I disagree. What? You disagree? I completely disagree. Hold on. If he is ass off, though, Maze, please clip in. Uh, uh, call an ambulance. Call an ambulance. But not for me. No, I think he legitimately is having the Alzheimer's, and he just wakes up with the gun in his hand, and then he just instinctively shoots the guy. And I don't think he would have shot the guy if he was conscious. I don't agree. He had to get away. They were looking for him. He had no idea what was going on. He's also been shot and lost a lot of blood. I don't think that's Alzheimer's. I think he passed out because he's losing blood. Yeah, but then he wakes up disoriented, not conscious. I don't think he's faking that. He wakes up, sees the cop. Okay, how do I get out of this? Oh, well, I know. I'm just going to pretend. But once the guy sees the gun, now he takes a step back. Now you're forced to act. I'm like a dog with a bone on this one. He limps back down to the basement of the bakery, takes out a first aid kit and vodka. He shakily chugs the vodka, looks at his bullet wound in the gut, pours vodka on the bullet wound, gets out a lighter, lights wait, the wound wait, on fire. Wait, wait a goddamn minute, You're man. Flying Jesus this Christ, just blowing You're through flying. this. First of all, please clip in. Don't worry, son. We're going to get you fixed up. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's a big fucking hole. Second, this is real acting. This is some of the best acting we have ever had on this show. No. He is unbelievable in this scene. It wasn't believable. You're right. Lighting the alcohol. Zach, you're jumping too. Let's start with the swig he takes. Two hands on the bottle for safety. Two hands on the bottle, shaking. 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 And in a half craft. Uh, opens up his thing. 
puts his pinky inside the hole. Oh. Why would you do that? Oh. Why would you do that? So then he shakily grabs the vodka bottle, pours it into the hole, and then he moans and cries. Ah, la ha, la ha. <laughs> and then takes the lighter. Oh my and God. I've never seen this in a movie. This is a golden dumpster. Oh my I've God. never seen this shit before. I've seen wounds cauterized a billion times in movies. Yeah. I've never seen someone light that shit. You grab a piece of metal. Yes. You put it in the fire and then you hold it down. This motherfucker should just light the whole shit and like a goddamn flamethrower. Like fucking Bacardi 151 on a shot. A flaming Dr. Pepper. Oh my God. And it's just going. And then he blows it out. Oof, oof, oof. And then he's panting and he's all sweaty and he cries. He's crying. And I was like, that's a very human moment. I mean, why doesn't Maze think this is good? I don't know, because usually these guys are tough guys. Like, they yeah. just do it, and they fight down. Like, this dude is crying, man. Yeah. Like, yes, it hurts like a bitch. He looks yes. like and he's stuttering. He's mumbling to himself. Oh, my God. Golden Dumpster nominee for sure. And he takes his gun apart for some reason. Yeah. He forgot? He forgot. <laughs> That's only so we can set up what happens next. No, I, I choose to believe it's because he forgot. Forgot what? <laughs> because he always sits at that table, usually he takes his gun apart and cleans it. And so he just sat down at the table and forgot what he was there for. He just passes out. Yeah. There's zero chance anything that he did would help at all. It's probable that the bullet is still in his body. He would probably die from this. No, not at all, because it's shot from behind. The fact that the hole's there, that bullet went through. Oh, yeah, he was shot from behind. That's right. As he's driving away. Yep. Wow. Good job, Zach. Mm hmm. Wouldn't he need to cauterize the wound on the back too then? Yeah, but he's like, he's lost so much blood. He's not thinking straight. Plus he's got Alzheimer's. He forgot. Or does the fire just burn through like right all the way? I don't think it burns through. That would be I mean, he poured yes. the liquor all the way through. It's a hole. It's an in and out, right? It's not a funnel and a hose. All right. Linda tells Guy about the motorcycle cop. You got spooked. That's not his style. His style is murder. Shut up, bitch. All right, they found his juvie records. Only problem is Alex Lewis is dead. What? He and his father died in a fire at the family bakery 40 years ago. So his dad used to just abuse him and his forgetful brother. <laughs> his brother's got advanced Alzheimer's. Man's a vegetable. The bakery has been vacant for 40 years? For 40 years. No one decided to buy that shit? Also, the bakery has this racist-ass logo. Yep. Did you guys catch this? I did, yeah. It's not great. What in the blackface? <laughs> it didn't even burn down. No! It just looks abandoned. The blackface was preserved. Marquez goes, walks into the bakery. There's still a fuckload of pigeons in there. He does a terrible job checking this out. He just walks around, and then he leaves. Yeah, Leah wakes up. He's not on duty. Duty, guys. Damn, why can't you guys get that through your heads? But he went there to investigate. Yep. Whether he's on duty or not, he did a bad job. Not on duty. I don't know what you're talking about with that. He's doing this recreationally right now. And by the way, ass off for Liam Neeson waking up. Oh, my God. He's so good when he wakes up in this movie. Back to the FBI, trying to figure out what Bellucci is hiding. Linda says only address on record for Liam is the bakery. Bakery's a wreck, unless you're looking for a pigeon. He starts flapping his wings. Oh, my God. The floor had traces of pigeon shit in the Bronco. Now, in order for there to be traces of pigeon shit. I mean, his boots would have had to have been caked <laughs> in pigeon shit. Yes, caked in pigeon shit. Because remember, he walked on the yacht. He walked on the fucking pier. He drove the Lexus. Yep. He stumbled around in the streets. Yep. And then he got into the Bronco that he hotwired. Or it's terrible writing. Plus, he's been stepping on shards of pill bottles. Yes. They go back to the bakery. Liam's sitting around popping pills. Guy finds a secret door that leads to the basement. They find his bloody station. But he's not there. He's by some big building. Lambeer walks into Monica Bellucci's office, wondering if she needs anything. He's helping guard her. As everybody checking on the radio top of the hour, all the police sirens and alarms go off at once at the cars outside. This seems like more than a couple off-duty cops. This is an army of police officers. The militia, yeah. This is like Bad Boys 2, right? Like the soldiers that are just playing yeah. soccer at 3 o'clock every day. <laughs> the guy at the computer has penis stripes. Shout out to Da Vinci Code. Uh, now I learned why. The blades. <laughs> Grabs a cop, pulls him aside. Lambeer lets that cop come up because his radio's dead. Needs a new battery. But when the elevator opens... Why? Why are the batteries upstairs? Liam has the assault rifle to the cops back, tells the other cops to put their guns down, and they do? That's not good police work. <laughs> the cop says, put your guns down. This brave asshole is just like... The cop tries to shoot him through the plant, and it's on. And that's when Liam 
falls so horribly to the ground, stumbles, that I wrote Golden Dumpster Lock. What? The way he fell. Did you watch that? It's so fucking funny. I mean, it's really fucking close to a lock for a Golden Dumpster. That fall wasn't that bad, Zach. Definitely looked like he tripped and fell. Right. The 70-year-old man hitting the floor. (laughs) He shoots one cop in the chest. Lambeer hides Bellucci. Liam pops another one. Cop runs out of bullets. Liam gets him. Liam shoots the lights out on the floor. His wounds really hurting him, though. He goes up some stairs. They think he's headed to the roof. They radio that he's on the roof, and that's when Lambeer says to put him down if you get the chance. Bellucci asks on as she puts her hands on her head. Lambeer tells Bellucci it's all over. He's going to get her out of there. Yeah, right, dude. Come on, man. That's when Liam shoots open a window from a window washing platform. Oh, Those things scare the fuck out of me. I could not be on one of those. He hits Lambeer with the butt of the gun. I had to shoot the window. And then come to and say, damn, I forgot why I'm here. Just starts washing the other window. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's got the gun pointed at Belushi. Belushi, not Belushi. No, I went, uh, he got Jim Belushi. He's been saying Belushi all episode. Belushi. That's what I've been saying. I don't want to hear from you, Beatriz. Okay? I let that one fucking fly the whole time. Who said that? He's going Beatriz the whole goddamn show. <laughs> Beatriz. Triz. Beatriz. That's her name. Her name's not Beatrice. It's not Beatrice either. I didn't say Beatrice. Run it back. Clip it in right now. Beatrice. <laughs> Every single time. There's about 30 of them. You killed my son. Yes. And I know what you've done. Grabs her hair, points the gun at her, clicks three times. He looks confused by it. I was like, should I not be doing this right now? And he pops up and knocks him out. Cut back to Guy. They're sitting at a table staring all his shit, and Linda finds the firing pin from his gun, so he didn't put it back together right. <laughs> Forgot. There's your memory lapse. Now we've got Lamb Beer with the restrained Liam Neeson. You know why I didn't just off you back there? Let me tell you why. He punches him. That would have been mercy. No. I want to see you go to you, or I want to make sure they fuck you to death, old man, you cop-killing piece of shit. And I said, Michael Bolton was right. They're not sending you to White Collar Resort Prison. Yeah. This is hell me in the ass prison. Full circle. How about that little girl? You know what they do to people who hurt little kids? I'll talk to the FBI. Vincent Sarah. No one else. <laughs> Another punch. Fuck the feds. Got you on three counts of murder. Busted fucking gun matches Borden and Officer Eric Lyle. Guy had a wife and two kids. They always have two kids. Yeah. Either two kids or one kid that was just born, right? They never have like an eight-year-old. What? Other than Commissioner Gordon in The Dark Knight. <laughs> Wait, you really back checked yourself there real quick. Yeah. All right, he's about to punch him again. The other cop interrupts. He needs to see a doctor. Suspension of disbelief broken by cop who says, Danny, he needs a doctor. Shut up. That shit would never happen. Once a written confession. Confession. FBI got a package of hard drives from the van camps. But he didn't send all of them. Nope, he sure didn't. Which is very important. They want Liam Neeson transferred to their custody. Newsbomb says to let him be their problem. Which side of this do you really want to be on? I need to talk to him. Seems very powerful people don't want him to talk to Alex. Liam's at the hospital now. Lambeer and Guy argue about busting Liam up. Guy accuses him of being on... Monica's payroll and they scuffle. He's a cop killer for fuck's sake. Cut to the hotel. They walk in. Liam. Well, well. The FBI, huh? (laughs) You're the one that shot me. I'm not going to offer an apology. I'm not asking for one. (laughs) I said one of these days I'm going to get arrested in like a huge sting. When they do, I want to say, well, 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 (laughs) the FBI. Guy hands him some pills and some water. He refuses the water. He's just going to raw dog those pills. Yeah, man. That's nuts. The water's right there. The dude lit a hole in his body on fire, bro. (laughs) It went through to his back. Yeah. A plume of flame (laughs) just going through his entire body. I understand you want to clear this up. Clear this up. No, I want Sealman dead. Not officially tied to any crime. He says, you know, that's not true. She sanctioned the hit. She hired me to kill two people. Ellis Van Camp and the second was that child. Girl of 13. Beatriz. I won't do that. No, no, you don't touch children. Easy, <laughs> man. Say no to. <laughs> Doctor treats Monica. She thanks him. Paging Doctor Horny. You're not just a client, you know. <laughs> she hands him a box of some syringes. I said, "Come on, Doc Sealman, the deal, man." Oh boy, get it because her last name Sealman. Retained his services for ten million dollars. She wants him to kill him. Took an oath. An oath. Like a marriage vow? She knows she was at Randy's party. Let's make this simple. $10 million or prosecution in prison for sex with minors. Oh, no. Doc is a kid toucher, too. He's also ass on. He's on this Epstein boat. Randy was weak, but he was my son. You are not. (laughs) 
She might be ass on too. Oh, no, she is. Guy has the written statement from Liam. Liam says it's not over. He goes to trial. He's getting life. Which doctors tell him is three to six months. So what are we doing here? Why are we here? Demanda Sealman. Justice. This is the part I said I wasn't paying attention and I don't feel like rewinding. What was Guy Pierce selling Liam? That his testimony is not going to hold up in court and everything. They're not going to be able to get Devanna Sealman. You really th- expect we're going to find justice? I expect you to try. Let me tell you something about justice. 12 months ago, a drunk driver was flying down the I-8 in a stolen car. He's high on meth. He's, uh, hasn't seen another car that's pulled over on the shoulder. A mom and her 10-year-old son. Coming home from Legoland. They got a flat tire. I get to go to Legoland. Say it. Legoland! 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 (laughs) Don't get them all riled up before the drive. Uh, I shouldn't have given them all that meth then. But Colby, he doesn't see that the woman's out there changing the tire. He just plows right into her. Kills her. Now he stops his car. And he sees behind him the boys jump down. He's obviously screaming. Seeing his mom dead on the road, crying for help. But Colby doesn't help. He puts his car in reverse and backs over the boy, making sure there's no witnesses. And then he torches his car two miles down the road. But a 15-year-old girl, she sees him. She sees a man walking away from a big fire with a gas can. Now, it ain't much, but it's enough to put Colby on trial. You know what happened? They do a photo lineup. But the girl, she doesn't pick Colby. So they do it in person. And again, she doesn't pick Colby, even though everybody knows it's him. Three times, three lineups, each time she picks a different guy. And Colby walks, and he's still out there. So, memory's a motherfucker. Ah, he said it! And as for justice, it ain't guaranteed. When he says he plows right into her, I went, woo-hoo-hoo! He says kills her, and I said, oh, never mind. Liam figures out that he's talking about his wife and son. I have evidence. Yeah? What evidence you got? Phone call. Devonna Sealman threatening the first man I killed. He's got it on a flash drive, but he doesn't know where it is. Memory lapse count six. Help me remember. Please. Guy goes to the Justice Department. They don't believe she's guilty. She's never even had a parking ticket. She doesn't drive herself, so that would make sense. She knew her son was raping minors, paid for the hit on Ellis Van Camp. I said, is Ted Cruz the DA? No, he's not. It looks like a brown Ted Cruz, even though Ted Cruz technically what? is brown himself. <laughs> Testimony of a professional killer. Supercharged that. Doesn't he have some kind of dementia? Advanced Alzheimer's. Any decent lawyer would annihilate him on the stand. They can use the audio of the phone call, bring it to him. Newsbomb wants to know if the DOJ is up for this. No, Gerald, I'm definitely not fucking up for this. I like that. She kept it real. Guy goes back to Liam. They need the recording. Remember where it is? Ass off for this muttering. I, I've been trying to remember. I, I can't. It's lost. Hata, hata, hata. I used to make notes here. Hata, hata, hata. There's no more notes. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, shit. There's no case without it. Need him to remember. Her doctor goes to see him. He takes out the syringe. No. Alcohol swab. <laughs> he hit the no. <laughs> I said, ah, ah, he said it. No. No, 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 no. He chokes him out. He slams him against the side of the bed. FBI hits the hospital. SWAT team is deployed. Cops won't let Marquez go with them. He's got a hostage. We see Liam shoot out the camera on camera. Man. Wants to talk to Guy. Linda tells him, hey, watch your ass. Guy drives up to the entrance. Liam is coming out with the doctor. They're covered by coats. They think Liam's in the suit, but he swapped clothes, so the snipers shoot the doctor. Oh, my God. The guy in the van who ordered the sniper to shoot, ass on. He's terrible. (laughs) Why wouldn't they then just immediately shoot Liam? Exactly. He ambles over to the SUV. He gets in there. He shoots the radio. That bitch owns the whole game. (laughs) (laughs) She does it on the FBI. They shoot out the tires, so now they can't drive off. They surround the SUV. He's stuttering his ass off, man. Are you sure about that? Listen to me. Maybe they'll kill you too. Just to, just to b- 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 bury this. Yeah, maybe, Alex. But listen, to bury. It's spelled B E R Y. No, right? Alex. Yes, yes. Bury. B E R Y. You said justice can't be guaranteed. Yeah. We owe it to that child. 
<laughs> he drops the gun, gets out of the car, and gets lit up by snipers. They light him up. Who would have thought Liam Neeson died a good 10, 15 minutes before the movie was over? I asked, is this a film noir, or has he just completely lost it? Ah, oh, I forgot the cops were out there waiting to shoot me. <laughs> he just walked out the car. He's just like, ah. Oh. I want you guys to just remember how you feel here, okay? Because I got one more review coming up. And no, it's not Tony Medley. It's a user review. When they're taking the board down at the FBI building, why is there a drawing of Liam Neeson? Yeah. <laughs> it's got very piercing eyes. Oh, my God. They're looking right into your soul. It's a great drawing. I thought it was a drawing of fucking Guy Pierce for a second. I was like, why is there this self-portrait? <laughs> he just likes the pretty, pretty pictures from being. <laughs> He goes to take the photo of the bakery off the wall, sees the sign, says B-E-R-Y, like Liam said. He fucking remembered. Cut to him climbing a ladder and looking inside. He finds the remaining flash drive. It plays the Ellis Devana tape for the DA. Says it's not enough. No, it's just a threat. They don't have corroboration without Liam. I'm like, you're right. It is just a threat, man. <laughs> when you're dealing with that kind of money, even if I had her handing the gun to Alex and paying him, she'd probably still win. Okay, that's not the attitude we want. <laughs> DA. It's a DA who's given up, man. What do you need? Like, if that's not enough, what do you need? They can't prove what Randy was doing. Guy screams and calls him a fucking coward. I'm not the coward. You're the coward. News Pump says that's enough. Time to take a leave, make it a long one, then let's reevaluate. News bomb, ass on. Guy's washing dishes at home, Lyndon knocks on his door. What kind of bitch dishes does this guy have, man? <laughs> Look, he's a single man now. I'm like, come on, bro. <laughs> no, come on, his family just died. By the way, it's a very nice house for a cop. He's an FBI agent. Oh, that's true, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Memory's a motherfucker. She says, we should celebrate your suspension. I'm not really up for it. I wasn't asking dipshit. Dip Get some fucking clothes on. <laughs> what? Ivana is playing some card game by herself. Old school solitaire, man. Yeah, solitaire. In a pyramid? Yeah, there's a solitaire pyramid version. Yeah, I used to play that when I was a kid. Shout out to her. Yeah, we didn't have those fucking iPads and surfaces and anything like that. Nope, nope. We could cheat anytime we wanted. Oh, man, I cheated so much. Ooh. She's drinking wine in the backyard. They're going into the bar. Guy and Linda are. They walk into the bar. They're two black guys with shirts tucked into their jeans. And I said, this has got to be a cop bar right here, right? <laughs> cop bar in Texas has to be. Yep. She gets her throat slashed. Slow-mo shot of the glass hitting the ground. There's a lot of fucking blood. A lot of blood gushing. The blood budget on this movie is insane. They were under budget, and they realized, shit, we got all this <laughs> excess blood. We got to use it right here in this scene. She also does the things with her hands that Tua did when he got concussed. Oh, the season up? Yeah. Throwing up gang signs. <laughs> <laughs> just like John Wall after a jumper. Just <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the bar. End of the night. He doesn't want to drink more. She calls him a pussy, of course. It's not like you've got a job. And then she forgot a wallet. So he's got to pay. She says she spaced her wallet, which is not an expression I'm familiar with. On TV, they see the Jake Tapper. Savannah Sealman found dead at her home. No suspects, no witnesses. Details are sketchy. And she says, Saint Inez. And does the prayer in almost perfect Spanish. Yeah, she's really learned. A Duolingo is kicking in. Guy wonders what's going on. Did you just give me an alibi? Amen. Did she, quote unquote, forget her wallet so that he could pay? Yeah, now there's a record. Uh, Marquez burning the clothes he was wearing. He tosses a bloody knife with his fingerprints all over it into the water. I said, who could be behind that mask? Film Noir, it's Liam Neeson. <laughs> I forgot I died. <laughs> Then there's a car driving down the road. Why? Roll credits. He's going back to Mexico. That was him? Yeah. All right. Thought maybe it was Liam Neeson. Or going back to go fuck Linda. Oh, I bet that's what he was doing. Yeah. Which I thought was going to happen at some point. One last review. I didn't read because of the spoiler. But just keep in mind that scene where Liam dies. User Prody, four out of five stars. I hope he didn't die. Yeah. He could just put his gun away with the FBI so they will not kill him. He don't have a gun at all when the police shoot at him. Not happy ending. <laughs> Okay. Again, that's a verified review. Sorry, buddy. Shoot at him or shooted him? <laughs> shooted him. I also have a review here from the Noonan Times Herald. Oh. The movie jumps the shark in one hilarious scene. Alex is shot and bleeding out. He retreats to the basement hideout to recover. Alex pulls out a bottle of vodka, takes a drink, and pours the liquor over his gaping wound. Then, Rambo style, he lights the bullet hole on fire. It's so ridiculous that I was tempted to stop watching. Neeson's action career has reached a new low with memory, and talented director Martin Campbell also mines the depths with this effort. 
That's mining the depths. There's a wrong-headed self important wrong wrong-headed wrong-headed self-importance that permeates this overly somber film. The seriousness sets a wrong tone for what ought to be an entertaining B movie actioner. Why not give us Stevenson going toe to toe with Neeson? Unfortunately, there's little fun to be had in memory. As you would expect, the rangy two-fisted Neeson punches people. In the face, exclamation point, in this movie. But those blows have fading effectiveness. He handles the pistol with a silencer like a pro, but the action, especially during a sequence in a high-rise building, is unimpressive. Disagree. Who cares if you lose the game? You got this off your chest. I mean, it's just one night of bar trivia. Ooh. One night of bar trivia is sacrosanct us. Trivia is sacrosanct. Based on the 2003 Belgian film, Memory of a Killer, or Dizak Alzheimer. <laughs> Most panoramic El Paso skyline shots in this movie are accurate. However, the tall, white, modern high-rise does not exist and was implanted into the movie. I didn't know which building they were talking about. El Paso's famous Lone Star-shaped LED lights located on the side of Mount Franklin is not featured in this movie. Maze, when we first get the establishing shot of El Paso, it's... Towards the front, towards the right, is a white building. It didn't need to be implanted in there because it doesn't come up at all right. in the fucking movie. <laughs> Most of this movie was filmed in Sofia, Bulgaria. Bulgaria! Whoa! Fucking how crazy is that? What? And no American-born actors appear in this movie. So every single person who's doing an American accent is a Lewis Pennock nominee. The pressure marks on Maya's arms show that actor Neeson was indeed holding his partner very strongly. Forgot that he was acting. <laughs> Got one more piece of trivia for you here, and this one is especially delightful. El Paso, where the movie is set, is nowhere near the ocean or large enough bodies of water where a marina with moorings for mega yachts could be located. The yacht scene, while fanciful, could not have taken place in El Paso or anywhere reasonably nearby, even by U.S. standards. I'd like you all to do an experiment on a plant, something that uh, may benefit mankind. And if you would devise something that's groundbreaking, I guarantee you a A in this course. Oh. Well, hold, hold on, man. You firing me? You can't, you can't do that, Lionel. Look, man, if you, if you don't want me to have a foreman job, I understand, but I need my fucking job, man. Lewis Pinnock Accent Award. Yes. It's just everybody. Yeah, I mean, I had Ray Stevenson as Danny Mora, Linda's Duolingo Spanish, and then anyone's English. Take your pick. Guy Pierce when he's trying to speak Spanish. I had Liam Neeson say, por supuesto. <laughs> I'm good with literally anybody here. I mean, it's just a stunning, stunning level of accents. All right. Anyone's English is the <laughs> fucking Lewis Pinnock. Nice show me with a horse with our guys. Yeah. 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 We got soul. Horseman, I had corruption and dementia. I had exposition. Yeah. There were long stretches, just pure, uncut exposition. Some definitely unnecessary ones, too. Guy Pierce goes into the whole exposition about how his family got killed. We got Monica Bellucci yep. with the exposition about wanting to live forever. Swim's position. Swim's position. Noose bomb's position. Newscast position. Ugo's position. Saint's position. Yeah, exposition, I think, is the winner here. Breathe in through nose, out the mouth. Axe on, axe off. off. Teddy Rex, Moosey Teddy Rex. Teddy Rex, Moosey Teddy Rex. Ass on, fuck it, ass off. Ass on, fuck it, ass off. Michael Bean Memorial Ass On Award. I'm good with literally anybody, man. <laughs> Not anybody. Yeah. Monica Bellucci. Oh, uh, I was going to say Taj Atwal. No, no, no. Monica Bellucci, man. I love her. William Borden was terrible. Which one's he? The guy that I mean called Michael Bolton. <laughs> no, Michael Bolton was ass off. Scott Williams' Ellis was terrible. Ellis is bad. Lee Boardman as Mauricio was terrible. <laughs> Mauricio. Josh Taylor as Randy Seelman was terrible. 
Ray Fear and his Gerald Nussbaum was terrible. Randy and his mom are both fucking leagues of ass on ahead of everybody else. The Sealmans? The Sealmans. All right, I'll go with Sealmans. Great Italian family. Carl Weathers Memorial Ass Off Award. Oh, this one's not even close. Who is it, Zach? It's Liam Neeson. Come on, man. You saw you saw that <laughs> when he got hit by Bill Lambier. <laughs> The sleeping. The sleeping, the waking up. The confusion anytime like his memory failed him. Oh my God. Like he looks so fucking confused. Oh, he's so ass off in this movie. He's brilliant in this movie. Oh, well, I will say his brother's pretty fucking good too. <laughs> I think I might have Alzheimer's. <laughs> you know, just for posterity. All the ass off nominees in this movie. Ass off for the old lady dying in bed because she saw her mom murdered. Ass off for Goon One. Ass off for Michael Bolton. Explaining that they're not going to go to a white collar resort prison, they're going to end up at Tommy and the Ass Prison. That's a different movie. Ass off for my guy who just wants a blowy. Oh, he was good, man. Ass off for oh, it kind of runs out after it's a bunch of you know everything else is Liam Neeson. Sorry, boys. The only one I think can truly challenge Liam Neeson is his brother. I'm surprised you didn't have the horse, Zach, as one of the no, because that POV shot, I hated it. It put on a little disguise for you and everything, especially because of that devil horse. I didn't think that was a devilish horse. What was the conversation before that scene? I don't know. Oh, something's missing. Here, put these on. Or was it horse like Kate Beckinsale in Tiptoes? <laughs> I'll do this movie, but I gotta wear my lucky devil horns. Liam Neeson, just because he's better throughout the movie, even though his brother really had that scene. He's jacking off a ghost. <laughs> Are you good at keeping secrets? Absolutely. Because I've got a, a present for you. A secret present outside by the dumpster. Is it a baseball mitt? To fit you like a baseball mitt, like a glove, <laughs> I hope. Golden Dumpster nominees. Liam telling his brother about the 1969 NBA draft. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was tails. Liam slamming the drunk guy's head into the bar. Devana wanting to reprogram DNA like an algorithm. The Suns picked heads and wrong. They got it wrong. And the goddamn Bucks got out Cinder. I was like, what? <laughs> I haven't watched much basketball since then. Randy getting killed while waiting butt naked on the bed. Danny telling Liam, I will make sure they fuck you to death, old man. You cop killing piece of shit. Him falling. And memories of motherfucker. Ah, I said it. I'll go first. I'm picking the 1969 NBA draft. <laughs> I got a couple other nominees. My guy who wants a blowy. Night Terrors. Well, the Night Terrors, spoiler alert, that's my pick. <laughs> but the nominees also are the cool walk away from the explosion. He's four feet from it. And, of course, alcohol on the fucking bullet hole. I'm going with, again, the Night Terrors. <laughs> I'm going with his bullet hole becoming a fucking flaming Dr. Pepper, uh, man. I've yeah. never seen that in a movie before. That was, I popped when that happened, man. I thought that was such great filmmaking. That's fantastic. Oh, well, I mean, I don't know if you remember this, but you picked it, motherfucker. Motherfucker. I like that. Over file. I was staring at my phone thinking, what am I doing here? Why are these headphones on my head? <laughs> my excitement level to do a movie, I get recency bias, uh -huh. Legion. Like, I remember being excited to do Legion and then it lived up to it. This movie. Didn't quite live up to the excitement levels, mainly because I thought this thing was just going to be Alzheimer's fest, left and right. I needed more Alzheimer's, more forgetfulness, more memory things, right? I needed Ugo and Linda to hook up. Yeah. I also needed the drunk driver to come back. I needed the brother in the asylum to come. Did you mention you needed Ugo to fuck the widow? I didn't need that. You were real horny for it. You were really, really amped up about that. Maze, play that back. Yo, he's not on duty. Yeah, that's true. He can do all of this shit. He can get drunk. He can fuck her. I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. And he drops this line. Well, I'm not here to clean your pool. And I said, Attaway, Bobby. That's the start of a porn right there, man. I was horny for it, but I thought, oh, because him and Linda got a thing. In retrospect, knowing that he doesn't fuck Linda, or at least not overtly, then yes, I needed that to happen. I needed him to bang some information out of her. There was just too much shit that was just like, we're going to do this, and then just never talk about it again. Mm -hmm. Having said that, Liam Neeson was so ass off in this movie. I liked looking at Monica Bellucci. And the story, while disappointing, it held me to the end. Yeah, I'm going to file this one. Wow. Maze? I can't believe how long we've been talking about this piece of shit movie. What? It was terrible. It was boring. I hated almost every minute of it, Phobe. Oh, what? Wow. You hated 
every minute? Yep. Not even the guy was asking for a blowy? You hated that part too? <laughs> I mean, I rewound him smashing his head into the bar a couple times to see how he did it, but that was about it. Fucking cool, man. When he was shaking the shit out of my house. Was I here last night? I was here last night. <laughs> They let her know that he has a specific set of skills and also he wanted French toast. I definitely thought that naming the movie Memory and putting it in the beginning that he has memory problems coming along, but then not really building it into the plot at all, except that he forgot where he left the flash drive that he easily could have just mailed to them. I thought that was stupid as well. So, yeah, Phobe. Uh, Zach? Look, they definitely lost the plot of the memory part of it, right? Maybe they named the movie after. I don't know. Maybe they named it before and just never got back to it. They could have done a lot more with the memory. I thought there were a lot more moments where he was going to be forgetful. I hate Guy Pierce. His face is so stupid looking, and it really bothers me to see him on screen. He's on screen a lot in this movie. I needed more from the Sealmans. I thought there was more there, and it's it's not quite there. I did like Bill Ambeer. I thought Bill Ambeer was good. He was. Linda's terrible. Marquez is not that good. Oh, I like Marquez. The Bordens are pretty bad in it. Oh, no. The, the Boltons? Yeah, they're great. I love them. Let me say this. This movie's rated R. We didn't get a single pair of tits in the entire movie. Yeah, that's usually what it's for. I'll say this. I thought Liam Neeson was phenomenal absolutely phenomenal there's a dusting of basketball history in here which you know most of it's kind of correct there so I, I like that little thing i don't know why a couple of irish brothers from el paso would be so invested in the phoenix suns but they were it's the closest nba team to them zach come on phoenix is closer to el paso than dallas houston or san antonio yep i know texas is fucking big but really Texas is big and el paso's all the way at the west yeah yeah, yeah. All right. So I guess that was a, a regional thing. They did their homework. <laughs> no, they didn't. <laughs> Hold, on. <laughs> Hold on. I actually really enjoyed this movie. I'm shocked Maze hated it so much. It wasn't as good as it could have been. Right. I was definitely more excited to see it than what it delivered. Mm -hmm. But I would watch the shit out of this again. I think Liam Neeson's so good in it. This is a pretty easy file for me. Maze, you want to change your pick? Nope. Terrible. Phobe. Make sure you're tweeting us. Your Lewis Pinnock Award, your Five Horsemen, your Ass on Ass Off, your Golden Dumpster, your Phobe or File to at Talk Hoops, at Darth Amin, at Corn Puzzle, at Lebitard Show on the old Twitter machine. Zach, you don't seem perturbed by this at all. Look, I kind of sense this coming from his tone throughout this. I'm not shocked that he phobed this. He's bad. He had a bad energy. Bad energy. He definitely had a bad energy. Bad yeah. attitude, you know. Maybe he wanted more from certain storylines. I don't know. I'm not going to name those storylines. I don't know what was going on here, I mean. Not the way you want to start a new year. I'm not the one who picked a movie about child trafficking. That was a mean. Well, I, I picked the movie about memory. No. Then I picked the movie about Alzheimer's. <laughs> it was a lot more about child trafficking than it was about memory. It was. It should have been called trafficking. Next time we make love, you introduce me to Jade. Zach, you're up next in Liam Neeson month. What's your pick? Well, guys, there's a lot to pick from. I sent our future guest for this month a list of these and was like, man, there's some of these on here that I really should be picking, but I'm going to say, oh, should, should have held them. I'm going to save them because I got to be true to myself. There are a lot of movies I'm excited to do in Liam Neeson month, but we've done sequels. We've done the third movie in a trilogy, right? With Ninja Turtles 3. Mm -hmm. But we've never done the third movie in a trilogy first. Scary Movie 3. So I'm going to take the 2014 action crime thriller. All he makes is action crime thrillers. Taken 3. Oh, no. I got a particular set of skills. I saw this in the fucking theater. I bet you did. I'm going to try to find my notes because I remember taking notes on this son bitch in the theater. I was taking notes. <laughs> I did. I was taking notes. Three. I saw this. I was in Atlanta. I was with Robbie Callen and Adam Jacoby from the old internet. I took notes on, I'll just tell you, on how many crimes he gets away with in this movie. I'm very excited to this movie. I've wanted to do it for a long time. Taken three next week. What were you taking notes for? 
Myself. <laughs> what? Zach was too soon. You deleted your notes. You were too soon. For the first 90 episodes of this podcast, but you're telling me you've got taken three notes out there somewhere chilling? I like the idea of Zach, <laughs> like the flash coming. You need to take notes. Oh, man, I got to find them somewhere. Good luck.